Yeah, what's going on, everybody? My apologies for the mess up. So, welcome to the show. This is the Team Sports On Demand podcast, where I'm going to help you transition from a measly civilian into a citizen soldier, y'all. All right, so if you're new here, let me know what state you're tuning in from. I apologize for the technical difficulties. This is why in the Army we do PCCs and PCIs, which I obviously did not do, and I rushed to get here, and I'm here, and now we're here. So, um, yeah, we already got 62 comments up in here. We got to get in here real, real quick, but I got a super-duper awesome update, y'all. All right, pay attention. <clears throat> is the is the Let me turn this off. Is the is the mic working? All right, because y- y'all might want to listen to this if uh, – you didn't pass the ASVAB and you're looking to have to do the confirmation test. All right. So about a month or so back in June, actually. Yeah, it was over a month ago. I visited, uh, if you were here, follow me for a while. I visited uh, the Pentagon and the National Guard Bureau because I, I am participating or was participating in the strength maintenance, um, strength, strength maintenance, recruiting and retention panel, right? Helping collaborate our minds to make the organization and recruiting better, right? And with that being said, I spoke to Eric something or other. I can't remember his name. But anyhow, we were at the Pentagon, and your boy brought this thing up about the confirmation test and how I feel, and I even said it in my video about the recruiting crisis, right? And I said, one of the easiest ways they could get numbers is not having to force people to do a confirmation test. I said it doesn't make any sense, right? When they go to MEPS or even a MET site, more so at a MEPS, they take your photo, they scan your fingerprint, they check your ID, and then check your ID again when you get down to testing. It's like, what do you, you don't trust the photo, you don't trust the fingerprint, like what's going on here? So I said, I I told them, this is an easy fix, right? It's already hard. We have so many more obstacles for people that it's like Pepper's Farm bread, but we got like multiple wrapped things getting to the enlistment right? The, the actual contract. So anyway, <clears throat> effective one August through the end of September. All right. If in the last six months you have a qualifying test score, but you scored over 20 points and under normal circumstances, you would have been able to, or you would have been forced or you're pending to do a confirmation test. It is no longer a thing. Hopefully this sticks around forever, but as of right now, if you are needing a confirmation test and you have a valid ASVAB test that you did at a MET site, which is an alternate testing site, or a MET, you will not have to do the confirmation test as long as you have a passing grade. So if, if you got that update and, and you appreciate that, do me a favor, share, share this video with somebody else. Appreciate you. Thank you very much. <clears throat> we got a lot of comments. We already got 75 up in here. All right, cool. So... This is one of the reasons why this is the, one of the best channels on YouTube about Army content, right? Because I, I have the most updated information, and I would like to say the most accurate, too. All right? I'm not always perfect. I'm not always right. And I don't know everything. But you don't know what you don't know, and that's why you're here. And uh, I have over 19 years of experience, over 23 years in the Army as a whole, specifically the National Guard. My full-time job is a recruiter, and my part-time job is a um, drill sergeant. And on my free time, I come on here to help you guys navigate the joining process so that you can make a well-informed decision so that you don't make a grave mistake in getting into something that you don't necessarily want to do. And yeah, I'll just leave it at that. And to prepare yourselves both mentally and physically for Army Basic Training, if that's what you're into, subscribe to the channel, hit that bell icon, and turn on all notifications so you don't miss anything from when I go live, when I go uh, post new videos, which I... I've been slacking on. I owe you that. But uh, your boy's been busy. Your boy's been busy, all right? <clears throat> but we are going to get started. But let's get the music going. It's kind of boring, right? I see we got Erica Bernie up in the house. Y'all, you need to go subscribe to her channel. All right? We're going to be doing a lot of collaborations in the near future. Now that she's a, a fully-fledged recruiter, I don't know. Um, but she's actually full time or not actually working as a recruiter yet. So with that being said, let's get into the comments. If you're new here, I work from the oldest comment, working my way up to the latest and greatest, most recent comment. I did see a uh, super chat in here. So let me uh, fix, not fix that, but let me find that first. It came in from Rivera's Clean Cut Lawn. Thank you so much for supporting the channel. I don't see any other comment after that, but I do appreciate you supporting the channel. Thank you so much. And um, 
again, I apologize to y'all. Next, for now on, I will make sure I do my PCCs and PCIs, pre combat check and pre combat inspection, y'all. We got this. We got this. Say less, man. Let's go. Starting with Tyler Foster with the hello. What's up? What's up? We got Luis Rodriguez up in the house with the hashtag Team Source, the first one of the evening. Thanks for everything you do. Looking forward to enlisting. How does shaving and shower work at basic training and drill? It happens in the uh, latrine. That's where you uh, put soap to water. Latest invention. <laughs> Hashtag I'm just saying. No, but seriously, um, you get about two minutes or so in the beginning of basic during red phase. It's called shower drills. Maybe less than that. Watch the hot spots and get out. But uh, after time goes on, you'll have a little bit more time. Not like 30 minutes or so late at your house, right? Five minutes, get out. You know, we got 60 plus trainees. I need to take a shower as well. And uh, it's done on your personal time or first thing in the morning before PT and all that good stuff. Another question he says, or asks of a recruit enlistee volunteers to go to drill before enlistment. Can they recruit request for the drill sergeant to give them a full whole experience? Of course. You know I'm going to do that for you this weekend. Absolutely. Uh, hope you are well. We'll watch tomorrow at work. All right. And be better prepared for basic training. when I'm Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. We got Erica Bernie, like I said. This is one of my most favorite YouTubers, content creators for the Army as well. She is a, an amazing person. I met her and her spouse and, uh, and their doggy. Yep, they're a little Frenchy. Awesome. Uh, they're lucky that uh, the dog didn't come up missing because I've been wanting a Frenchie for quite some time. But Erica is now, she has recently transitioned from working with Tradoc. I'm not exactly what she, sh sure what she does, but when I bring her on the channel, I have her introduce herself and all that good stuff. But she just graduated recently from the, I believe they call it the Recruiting College for the United States Army. So she is a USAREC or Active Duty slash Army Reserve Recruiter. She's brand spanking new. And I'll tell you what, I know her personally, and she's going to take care of you. So if you got any active duty questions, go follow her. Her name is the same exact thing on Instagram, Erica Bernie. So go check her out and make sure you follow and subscribe and all that good stuff. All right? We got the great white. Hey, just on your channel a few weeks ago and wanted to say thanks for the information you provide. I was National Guard in Michigan doing a split op program, which is the split uh, split option. Uh, which I, I did a video on if you guys want to know, but anyway, but got out 12 years ago. I'm looking to get back in. Hell yeah. As long as you can retire with 20 years of service on or before your 60th birthday or 62nd birthday with a waiver, then no waiver is required as long as you can, you know, meet that requirement by age 60. But as I just said, if you go over 60, but less than 62nd birthday, then uh, a waiver could be entertained. But good luck to you. May the MEPS gods forever be in your favor. Welcome to Genesis. You're welcome. Not really, but good luck. <laughs> All I'm going to say. Yeah, see you with the hashtag. Team Swords. Appreciate you, buddy. Thank you very much. We got the Great White also says, and I got to go back to, into boot camp. LOL. Yes, unfortunately. But I want to pursue law enforcement, so I'm going in as in a 31 Bravo. All right, cool. Just so you all know, 31 Bravo is not a, a, a necessary need to do prerequisite for law enforcement on the civilian side. All right. A lot of times we get a lot of these bro vets that, you know, had been in the military, maybe even currently serving in the, in the guard reserve as a military policeman. And they go into a civilian law enforcement uh, agency and they get themselves into trouble because they're like, well, in the army, we do it like this. All right. So sometimes it's not always a good idea to have, at least in this example, that work experience to uh, convert that into the civilian sector because you know have that mentality that your glass is always half full and that there's always room for growth and and, and to learn new things and not to act like a know-it-all or that your way is the better way all right but uh good luck to you all right the great white <laughs> yes here uh with team bernie hell yes yeah, i'm talking about Jocelyn with the hashtag team sports question can i join the zero nine mic program or the future soldier preparatory course for those who fail the ASVAB or do not uh, exceed 6% of the maximum allowable body fat for their age and gender, and only one program may qualify. So a little birdie said at the recruiting operations branch at the National Guard Bureau at at the NG, uh, at NGB, which is kind of like our, our higher headquarters, I consider like our version of the Pentagon, right? Anyway, they told us in the very near future, I suspect in the first quarter of the next fiscal year, starting sometime after October 1st, 
they're saying that you can fail the ASVAB and do the uh, the body fat composition portion of the 09 bike program. So in the future, you will be able to do both. As of right now, it's one or the other. Erica with the hashtag Team Swartz. Love it. Love it. Hell yeah. Got great white. Funny enough, I had a drill sergeant named Lewis and Fort Benning. Hell yeah. Thank you for your service, by the way, if I didn't uh, mention that before. And yes, we definitely need to do a collaboration for Shizzle by Nizzle. All right, we got hashtag Team Swartz for Life coming in from Rivera's Clean Cut uh, Cut Lawn Care. Hell yeah. Give me five bucks as hashtag Team Swartz tuning in from Fort Worth, Texas. Been a while. Yes, it has, but welcome to the stream. I don't think I like this angle. Showing my double chin. That's what I get for rushing this. All right. The great way with the hashtag team sports game master 35. Is there a way to be a New York national guard full time? Can I switch from reserve? I'm a New Yorker and don't want to move from New York and I want to have a full time military job. Hashtag team sport. That is a really good question. I did a whole video that will go into this in grave detail titled full time national guard reserve opportunities. With that being said, you know, what? it's really bothering me. I'm going to fix that real quick. Like the females always say, right? It's all about them angles. You know what I'm saying? I think that's a little bit better. What do you think? Ooh, too low, too low. I think that's a little bit better. All right. So with that being said, yes, we have various positions within the Army National Guard that you could potentially apply for. That video will go into more detail, but for uh, time saving sake to be able to get to everybody within the stream, Go check out that video. It is possible, but you got to go check out that video for more details. All right. Appreciate you. Thank you so much for tuning in and uh, live here, work here, serve here. Something like that. I forgot what our slogan is now. But anyway, live here and serve here. Something like that. <laughs> anyway, Carla says, I got a 67 out of podcast on a ver uh, in or hand. I got 67 on PiCat on VTest at MEPS, pushed me to the real ASVAB, got an 18. I retake it on August 15th. I was wondering if the next time at MEPS, it would be the same as the PiCat or real ASVAB. What should I uh, take, consider? I'm not sure what that meant, but I think I know what you're asking. For. So, unfortunately, you are going to have to take the full version ASVAB. The PiCat is just a version that you could take unproctored away from MEPS at your leisure at your home or in the recruiting office that could be verified to make for record obviously the system uh perceived you as having inconsistency with the responses that you were take getting from the verification test or maybe you were one of the two out of the 10 that was automatically pushed to the full asvab or maybe the site was down and you had to take the full asvab anyway but unfortunately the verification test is a no-go at the station so you're gonna have to pass a test on your own like a normal person, all right? Hate to break it to you, but yeah, it is what it is. So good luck. Make sure you study. T check out Grammar Hero and Gammon All Tutors. Both of their links are located in the description area down below. Check that out. Again, it's in the description. Appreciate you. We got the Great Whites. Are their full-time 31 Bravo National Guard? Not as a military policeman. Like, they're not, like, enforcing the law. So in a military police company... There may be a full-time slot as a readiness NCO or a training NCO that could be that MOS, something like that, but it's not like you're enforcing law or anything like that. But check out the video. It'll make more sense. Erica, when are you vlogging? So, Erica, um, I'm actually going to talk to you offline about this. <laughs> but I just realized something about you that I admire about and... I'm going to start vlogging a day in a life because of you. But I want to talk to you offline about it. But I, yes, the people are asking for it in the DMs. I enjoyed the creativity in creating those videos. Although I don't like talking in public vlogging because it feels really, really awkward. But it is something that I'm bringing back to the channel because I can. Anyway. Got to skip all the uh, no audio statements here. But I tell you what, the though, all these uh, can't hear you. The audio is gone. Definitely boosted the uh, the algorithm for <laughs> engagement for sure. I guess you could say that's an engagement hack. What do you say? 
All right, we got Connecticut in the house. Vermont, another hashtag team source from Matt Too Much. Welcome back, man. Appreciate you. Ohio, Flo Rida is in the house. We got Sci-Fi, the chemist says, thanks for all the videos. I'm shipping out August 20th as a 19 kilo. Al freaking standing. Good luck in basic training. To anybody else going to basic training, good luck. Keep your head down. Do what you're told. Be in the correct uniform. Have a good attitude. Attention to detail. And always, always, teamwork is the key and you'll be all right. Basic training is survival. Uh, survival. Sur you can survive basic training, all right? <laughs> Seriously, let's get right into it. All right, we got the Great White saying Michigan. Hell yeah. We got Carla with the hashtag Team Sort saying hello. What up from Danny T. Young from Facebook? What's up? He also says, just took the test at my recruiting office and had to take a confirmation test just last week. It sucked. Absolutely. How did you do on the uh, confirmation test? Let's see, did you say? No, you did not. Let me know. All right, I'm not going to skip any, anybody else. I just wanted to go there. But Great White also says, congrats, Kevin. Oh, that's not for me. We got Atlanta, Georgia, Wizzy Carla. We got Sci Fi, uh, not for me. Hashtag Team Sports coming in from Erica Bernie, as previously described. We got, you know, we're going to talk about Danny. I love the Army. Can't wait to get back in. I was born to be a soldier. Man, I love that energy. Hell yeah. We got Mike Dredd or Dreed. Is it hard to enlist after getting an RE code of 2C from the Air Force? Looking to e uh, either enlist in active Army or active duty Navy. Thank you for your insight. All right. Absolutely. Yes. That could possibly be waverable. You got to understand. I don't know. Like the only time for the most part that RE code is going to matter is if you get an RE4 for the same branch of service that you're trying to get back in. If you royally F up in your branch of service and they don't want you back, they're going to give you a re-enlistment code or an RE code of a four that means do not pass go do not collect two hundred dollars don't even bother resubmitting an application you're denied like they have like a uh a bolo photo <laughs> of you when you go to try to re-enter be like do not let this guy back in he's a he's a loser right or she right and um yeah so unfortunately if it's an re4 there's nothing we can do for that branch of service go explore your options in other branches of services i've enlisted people from the navy with an RE4. So if I can get an RE4 in, I can get you in with an RE2C. Again, it really depends on the narrative reason for separation and the SPD code, which usually correlates with the narrative reason for separation. So depending on the discharge information may require your recruiter to obtain your discharge packet. I recently got one for one of my recent uh, applicants. Uh, yeah, so anyway, his discharge packet, right? So. It's like this thick. It's like a good inch. And I mean like negative counseling upon negative counseling upon negative counseling. It was obviously for uh, performance and conduct, right? For basically just failing to train and adhere to the rules or not rules, but guidance and instructions, all right? So you got to understand like if you go to basic training or even in AIT or OSA and you say to yourself that you want to quit, it's not going to be a fast process. You got to understand that the government is being charged somewhere between 70 to like $150,000 for your training seat for the travels, the insurance, the medical, the trainers, the training equipment, everything that you're going to need for your entire training to include your pay, your benefits, your family uh, benefits, all that stuff. Right. And then. For you to be like, oh, I don't want to be here because my feelings are hurt or I have tiny heart syndrome and I can't take you yelling at me. Listen, it is not going to be a fast process. I have a guy in my DM right now because <clears throat> I'm not going to ever advocate. Hardly ever do I ever agree with somebody who is at the training site that wants to quit. It's got to be for a, a legitimate, compelling reason for me to support someone to quit at basic training. Other than that, I do not agree with anyone trying to quit. All right. So with that being said, it is going to be a process that's going to take more than 30 to 45 days to go through the whole chain of command all the way up, all the way down and, and to build your the validity of the request of discharging you for whatever that reason is. Right. So you're literally going to be at the training site and you're going to watch everybody before you graduate and move on to their training. And you're going to be a holdover until it's time to leave and go home. So just a, a little warning there. All right. So we got to come back to 1913. 
We got a super chat coming in from Johnny Jones. What's up, man? Appreciate the super chat. Thank you very much. It goes right back into the channel. He says, I had an umbilical hernia surgery in April and reoccurred same day. I went back to lifting uh, weights, running two mile surgery again soon. Should I talk to a recruiter and take the ASVAB? Could I get a waiver? All right. So the, was that a hernia? Yeah, hernia, right? Yeah, hernia. All right. So it sounds like you still need a surgery for it. So you're going to have to get that surgery and then wait six months from that data surgery go back to the doctor be assessed right and obtain a letter saying that that you've, you're fully recovered fully healed and the hernia is no longer a thing and then you'll be fine but do yourself a favor if you're prone to hernias like if you just had a hernia surgery you might not want to work out and cause another one <laughs> hashtag i'm just saying but you are gonna need the the all clear letter and you do have to wait a minimum six months so you could talk to a recruiter you could do the the asvab test at minimum but you're not going to be able to meps will not allow you to do the medical exam until six months after that surgery successfully apparent uh hopefully right so appreciate you <clears throat> i'm gonna start using some sound effects for now on i don't know what do you think i should do should i do the applause when i get a uh uh, super chat. Yeah, I think I'm gonna use that one. Yeah. Or we could do this. What do you think? All right, let me know. <laughs> Hashtag. I'm just saying. I just want to have fun with my toys. You know what I'm saying? But um, good luck to you. You'll be all right. So we were at 1913. 1913. Here we go. Sci-fi. Here we go. Sci-fi chemist says my basic in AIT will be at Fort Moore, formerly known as Fort Benning. Out freaking standing. Good luck to you and have fun. Karen says the collab we needed. Yes, absolutely. I'm I'm super stoked. You guys have no idea. Like, I I have a bone to pick with her because I'm not gonna lie. Like, she lived and worked on or near Fort Jackson when I was at the Joe Sergeant Academy, y'all. And I brought one of my limited edition Team Swartz coins, and I was like, "Yo, Erica, I want to meet you. Uh, I want to shake your hand." And uh, you know, I wouldn't say I wouldn't call her my idol, but it's right up there. You know what I'm saying? And and she was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. No worries. I'm going to come see you. I'm going to see you. And she never did. She never did. But I did get to meet with her in D.C. last summer for the Army Ambassadorship Influencer event. So anyway, but absolutely. Joshua O says, I enlisted into the National Guard, but I want to do ROTC after I finish basic and AIT. How would I switch from the unit I've been assigned to in ROTC? <clears throat> All right, Joshua. Now, depending on geographically where you're at, you may stay in the same unit. What will end up happening is once you sign your SMP contract and you're actually contracted in an ROTC with the intent to commission as a second lieutenant, you're going to shadow a lieutenant at your unit or another unit. Usually it's the same unit uh, unless the state decides to move you to a different unit, but you're just going to be in the same unit shadowing another lieutenant so uh yeah so it's not about how it's it's whatever your unit tells you or the state christ lives says uh this may be a stupid question but hey i'm not gonna say that there aren't any dumb questions but you don't know what you don't know okay same thing for me i am genuinely curious but i am currently in the south carolina state guard State Guard or National Guard? Difference. There is a major difference. And I want to know if I go and join. Okay, so I, you are right. Okay, so you're in the State Guard and you want to know if you go National Guard, how is the recruiting process? Like everybody else, you talk to a recruiter, you take a practice test, you bring in your documents, we, we make copies, you fill out an application, we build your packet, you take the ASVAB test, the medical exam, maybe any uh, medical consultations, waivers if needed. And then you sign your contract. That's the pretty much the whole process. All right. Good luck to you. The Great White says, damn, that's where I was. Sand Hill. I'm going back in Fort Leonard Wood. Hell yeah. Erica Bernie says it's coming soon. Hell yeah. We got Matt too much. <clears throat> I get dry, cracked hands and lips that bleed. Are chapstick and lotion allowed at basic training? Yes. Just 
I wouldn't bring it with you. Because you'll get it there. Is it like a regular non-prior service member? Hang on. Christ Live says, is it like a regular non-prior service member or is it different thanks in advance? Let me see the first part of my comment first. So yeah, uh, you were in the State Guard going to the National Guard. So the State Guard is not like an, an official military branch of service. So yes, you will be treated and enlist as a non-prior service member unless you've actually previously served in the United States military. But State Guard is like auxiliary but military related or like volunteer scatter. I am in college planning on enlisting into the national guard after through my special forces contract. How long is it training? How long is the training pipeline? And what, uh, what is basic like for national guard opposed to active duty? <laughs> There's a zero difference. Whether you're active duty guard or reserve, we all get the same training at the same locations with the same drill sergeants, with the same equipment, same pay, same benefits. There ain't no difference, man. There ain't no freaking difference, all right? And from I'm not a special forces recruiter, but I would mentally prepare yourself to know that you're going to be in a training pipeline for like at least a year, maybe a year and a half if it's not back to back training. All right, but good luck to you. That's pretty awesome. That's pretty dope. Hit me up when you're done. Maybe I, you know, I could ask a whole bunch of questions and do like a updated like special forces what to expect kind of video. That'd be pretty cool. You let me know. Tony Ministro says, when do I start picking a job with my recruiter? After you successfully pass the ASAP test and the medical exam. Unless you're going to sign your contract the same day under the assumption that you're going to pass medical. But yeah. Anytime, Erica. Always support your battle. David Z says, thank you for all your videos. Tuning in from the hotel. Early day tomorrow at MEPS. Hoping everything is a go and listing as an Airborne 25 Sierra. Um, we, I don't have any Sierras over here. I'm not sure what a Sierra, Sierra is, but I know it's in communications, obviously. But awesome for you. Hopefully, everything goes well. Hopefully, the MEPS gods are in your favor and you pass everything for sure. Matt, too much question. Also, no over the counter at AIT. Does that mean I still can't take my Claritin? Correct. That isn't over the counter medicine, right? My allergies are the worst anyone has seen. Yeah. Consider this character development, man. Just. And consider this character development. That's all I got to say. EKD123 says, when you go to basic, will they ask you if you have a dietary restriction like being a vegetarian? I was wondering if when, if and when uh, we have eat MREs, uh, will they make a... Absolutely, man. Listen, it doesn't matter if you're a vegan, vegetarian, a normal person. If it's a mainstream, normally accepted diet to include kosher, if you're Jewish, we got you. Say less, fam. Jose Ivan Escalante. What benefits are given to the soldier who has a child? So when you're in training full time or if you're on active duty, you have full medical vision and dental 100% free. If you're in the Guard or Reserve, I'm not saying it's unfortunate, but fortunately and unfortunately, there is a low cost fee for each of those. All right. But it is, is really good. Really, really good. And that that's like the main thing. There's a lot of like minor things that, that your, your child could benefit, like free tutoring services and daycare uh, assistance. If you're active duty, um, all kinds of different things. Tony says, my recruiter said that my score hasn't popped up yet. Um, ICAT? Maybe, but ASVAB? Instantaneous. Shoot, I get the ASVAB score before you even finish the Pike or the uh, the Tapas test. <clears throat> Margar Margarita M says, just enlisted National Guard as an E4 specialist. What aren't chances? Huh? Just enlisted National Guard D4. What are my chances? Okay, here we go. What are my chances of getting into ADOS after AIT? Uh, really good question, Margarita. And uh, appreciate you tuning in. Looks like you're a new face here. So thank you, thank you, thank you. 
there are limited full-time positions within the National Guard and Reserve. So I'm not sure how they do it in Reserve. You did say National Guard. So I'm not sure if you're from New York. If you are, uh, well, it's going to be in this uh, going to be linked in this video. So the full-time National Guard Reserve Opportunities video I'm posting into the chat box now. It's also conveniently located in the, in the description area, so you can watch that later. But in that description area beneath that video is the link for the New York Army National Guard uh, employment opportunities as a civilian, um, ADOS, AGR, OTOT, state active duty, pretty much anything under the sun in the National Guard, Air and Army is on that link for the New York Guard or for the New York Army National Guard. So find out in your state how they post their job listings and then you can start looking for stuff like that. At your level as an E4, the types of things that you could look into is state active duty, military technicians, recruiter assistant, supply sergeant, unit administrator, and some other odds and ends that your unit could share with you if there's other unit related stuff. Like there's a chemical company here in New York City. They have uh, like a, a surf pee, herf pee, kind of like a uh, hazmat full-time gig and they have ADOS positions but yeah Texas Highway to Health says I'm in Texas where would I go for basic training for the reserve and how long is training and thanks for all that you do really good question and to, to answer that it, again like I previously said earlier there is no difference whether you're active duty guard or reserve all right we all get the same training at the same location so currently right now the the four main locations are the only four locations for basic training in ait or osat it or not ait but for basic training or osat is fort sill in oklahoma fort benning or sorry fort moore <laughs> correction new name fort moore in uh georgia then we have fort jackson in south carolina and fort leonardwood in missouri lost in the woods Okay, that's what they call Leonardwood, Lost in the Woods. So with that being said, how long is basic training? Is 10 weeks plus about a week, week and a half for your in-processing. All right. If you're going OSUT, expect your in-processing to be longer. Your in-processing is what we refer to as your reception process where they receive you and to make sure that you are administratively and physically or medically uh, ready for basic training and all that good stuff. So about 11, 12 weeks right there. And then however long your AIT is, your job training, your advanced individual training, whatever job skill you decided to join as, okay? But good question. If you wanna know what happens at basic training, I have a whole basic training mini series right here. Yes, it was during COVID. Yes, there's a lot of COVID related stuff in those videos, but just ignore the COVID stuff. But the basic training, the meat and potatoes, the POI, um, the, the curriculum of basic training, is no different then and it is now the only thing that is back since i did this uh mini series or i wouldn't say that it's back back but it's making its comeback and that is combatives training and hand combat all right and it's not much training so you're not missing out on anything if you don't get it all right it's literally just one to three days of training and it's a lot of like physical activities like shrimping and it's more another way for us to smoke you physically <laughs> Than to actually teach you how to fight all right but anyway the great white also says question how different is the army versus when i was in a decade ago if you watch my basic training mini series the link i just posted you'll probably see some of the differences all right 10 years ago i don't think there's much of a difference the only thing that's missing then compared to now is the shark attack you're not going to experience a shark attack most places have adopted a similar program as the infantry's first of 100 yards which is basically you you conduct a supply mission however you pick up your supplies at your one location and you transport everything as a group as a team to the to the designated area right uh and you have to set everything back up the way you found it and if you fail then you get smoked and then you can do like three out of the six events for the new army combat fitness test and once that's done then uh the winner of that you know congratulations everyone else who didn't win that aspect of the uh first 100 yards will uh do corrective training you know more physical activities and honestly <clears throat> although the shark attack did ha did have a lot more yelling and whatnot i feel like the first 100 yard 100 yards is more physically demanding than the shark attack 
just my my opinion but erica bernie can weigh in on that because i think she was still there when they were doing a variant of that at fort jackson but uh yeah more to follow on that when we collaborate or collab matt too much says this will be the last time tuning in from shipping out to fort jackson tuesday next week want to thank you for everything and you had a big um, impact on me and listing thank you for what you do well matt too much i appreciate you i'm gonna miss seeing your name in the chat box here but uh Man, that, that means a lot to me. And I, it wasn't me, man. Just make the best of this opportunity. Put your best foot forward. Stay the course. Stay focused. Stay hungry. Dominate your day as here's the drill likes to say. And uh, earn that title of a United States soldier. Huh? All right. Moving right along to Goose. Is it advised that I begin preparing for enlistment a few years in advance as I am still in high school and I am set to join Junior ROTC and take the ASVAB this year? When I say yes to this, I don't mean like go ham in the gym two hours a day. I mean like just generally be physically active so you're not a fat mother effer. You know what I mean? So just be generally active so that you have a good basic level of physical fitness or physical capability so that when you go to basic training in the future, you're not going to be overly or overtly sore. All right. And I, I don't want you to get injured either. So I do want you to play sports and be a kid and have fun because there's plenty of time to be an adult later on with, to do adulting stuff. Right. Because I'll tell you what, man, no, I'm going to mess up that joke. <laughs> oh, I wanted to say a joke today, too. I want to start a new trend where every day or every week I start the, the stream off with a, uh, a dad joke. <clears throat> but anyway, moving right along. Yes. Junior I, I, I'll put it. Let me say this real quick. Mentally, I used to make fun of people in the junior ROTC. Maybe it's just because the New York City ROTC uh, programs that I've witnessed, I, I was not impressed. And, and they didn't really seem to do much, honestly. But when I was invited to the JCLC at Fort, Dev Fort Devons back in June, let me tell you something. These were some... I mean, there was a lot of eight up stuff there, but let me tell you something. They were impressive with their DNC, how they carry themselves, how they conducted themselves, the level of knowledge that they have. <laughs> I remember walking away because I didn't want to get embarrassed because <laughs> I'm not going to lie. The questions they were testing each other on, like, I didn't even know the answer to them. I'm like, damn, I forgot. Or I didn't even know that. So I was like, you know what? Let me just... uh sidestep over here kind of like homer simpson backing into the bushes yeah that was me <laughs> i'm not gonna lie uh but yeah i was quite impressed it, it, it was good so alpha company leads away that's all i'm gonna say uh but anyhow we got the great white failing to prepare is preparing to fail that's right start training as soon as possible and suggest start rucking to get a much better conditioning don't go hard on the rucking so again, I just want you to be physically active. Yes, I do would prefer you a few months out before you actually leave for basic training to start walking and working your way up to like, you know, four miles or so. Yeah, yeah. I want you to condition your feet and, and improve your uh, bone density <clears throat> and condition your feet so that you get some tough skin or calluses or, you know, rough skin around certain points of your feet. So what I, it's what i call the hot spot so like when you ruck it, it's not like a like you could walk forever when you're at your own pace doing your own thing like you could walk all day and hike all day rather but when you're rucking we're rucking for time and the the minimum standard is like 15 minutes per mile so you're you're walking fast and you're gonna get some hot spots so in the beginning you might get some blisters and stuff and just I prefer to pop them. You do you, boo-boo, but <laughs> I prefer to pop them and just leave them there. Do not peel them off. That eventually uh, hardens and becomes like a callus. And you're going to want to build calluses in the hot spots of, uh, of your feet. So take care of your feet. That being said, we got Margarita again with another one that says, just listen to that. Oh, yeah, we already talked about that. My bad. Your fault. <laughs> Matt, too much. Everyone hit that like button. Do it now. What Matt just said right there, do it. Do it now. Serious. All right. <laughs> All right. So, uh, Pandora said, uh, Josh says, ship out next week, 18X. That's what I'm talking about. We got a lot of 18X in here today. So, if you guys are here and you got, I mean, you guys are probably already following them, you got to follow the FNG Academy, y'all. 
go check out his videos. He's a former active duty slash National Guard Special Forces guy. And uh, I read his book. It's pretty cool. And he'll definitely help you get selected. I mean, you're leaving next week. So it is what it is at this point. But good luck to you. Rivera's Clean Cut Car. Rivera's Clean Cut Lawn Care. There we go. What is a distance you recommend should I be able to run prior to basic training? My good rule of thumb is if you can get, so as of right now on the army combat fitness test for most of us, you need to be able to finish it in 20 minutes, 21 minutes or less, right? So if you can run two miles in like 18 minutes or less, I think you're in a good, good position, not the best position, but in a good position so that I know that in the first five events, suck the soul out of you. You should be able to run two miles in 21 minutes or less. That's all I'm saying. All right. But that's my rule of my minimum rule of thumb. Texa Barra. But I'll tell you what, Rivera, I did a whole video. You might want to check this out. Like everybody here that, that already signed a contract. I know for sure that they're joining. You're going to want to save this video. It's in the description area as well. But I just put it in the chat box. It's the best ways to prepare for basic training. One of the many topics I cover in this video, like this is by far the hands down the best video to help you prepare for basic. And I'm not just saying that to be uh, uh, egotistical or anything like that. I do mean it in the sense that you will find it highly informative and I will uh, bring things to, to your mind that you're probably not thinking on your own. And if your recruiter is doing the minimum standard as far as taking care of you, this, th this video will help you prepare yourself for basic training, both mentally and physically, financially family it's got a little bit of everything in there and one of it is uh uh working out and stuff like that and i talk about running in that video so definitely go check that out hexabera uh you skipped my question sorry hexabera this is the first time seeing your name in the chat here i'm scrolling up scrolling up not seeing anything not seeing anything not seeing anything so you're definitely new here because i don't recognize your name and i just scrolled all the way back to seven o'clock and i don't see your name anywhere so i'll tell you what hexa you might have to direct message me on instagram your question because what happens here in the channel i don't skip anyone's question i'm not like that i like to go from the oldest to the newest so with that being said if your question or statement is important to you direct message me on instagram at team sports and this goes for anybody in the stream if i don't get to you today um better luck next week <laughs> No, I'm seriously though. Uh, direct message me on Instagram. I get it to everybody. I will not open it up unless I know I have the time to respond to you genuinely and authentically. I don't like to just open it and leave you on red. So just know that if I haven't opened it, I do see them because I have OCD. Like I have a few I have to get to um, today. But with that being said, I get to everybody. So hex, I have certain words or key phrases blocked on the channel for various reasons. You're Thing is probably blocked for whatever reason and it's just not coming into the stream so you could repost your question again by all means but i'm not seeing it on my end all right apologize for that but it is what it is we got the great white also says rivera's trained for up to 5k we did one 5k before graduation but that's the furthest we ran non-stop i suggest you start rucking because that's much harder i agree and it's good for fitness too all right, so we got strumming and wrenching. Going to MEPS on Monday. If you're going to MEPS, you got to watch this video. Pretty much when I take my people to MEPS and I give them my MEPS briefing on what to expect and some tips and insights, it's in this video. If you want to learn how to survive MEPS, watch the video. Just ignore the stuff I talk about with M-Road. M-Road is the, uh, the old version of like Worse, ver worser version of Genesis, but uh, yeah. Anyhow, go check that out. Just ignore the M Road references. <clears throat> Sergeant, I got a question from Hex, but I don't see no question. Carla says, "What types of vision problems are disqualified from MEPS? At MEPS, it's uh, astigmatism is the main thing, and um, uh, I forgot what it's called like myopia but they don't test for myopia at maps but anything like but they they will look for like lasik and prk but astigmatism is the main thing it's when you go to recept uh, at the reception time when you go through another mini medical where they evaluate you in other types of eye conditions like myopia and some other stuff 
All right. We got Poppy. Poppy. Poppy saying, waiting to hear back from my waivers. Hope to be leaving soon. I hope so too. Poppy. All right. I don't recognize you. I thought you were one of my applicants, but you're not my applicant, I don't think. Uh, but hopefully your waivers go well. Yeah, color blindness for sure. Yeah, I forgot about that. Thank you, South Jersey Artisan. And uh, I got to scroll down. So that was at 1930. So we'll go to 1931 with Matt Too Much coming back. We got a channel member for three months coming in from South Jersey Artisan. He says, hashtag Team Sports. Appreciate you, buddy. Thank you very much. Here tonight, heads up, I did a thing as a surprise, and we will need to chit-chat at some point when you have time. Well... I think you have my number. If not, direct message me tomorrow and I will hit you up. Looking forward to that. And uh, thank you for the assist with the color vision comment. So we were at 1931. Matt, too much. Here we go. Also, I've heard of recruits pushing through basic, even though injured, torn ligaments, fractures, etc., etc., and still graduate. Will the army treat these if they heal improperly afterwards? Yes. So this is my take on sick call and what in determining whether or not you are hurt or injured and in your mind is it worth the risk versus the reward right so uh, yeah so <clears throat> when you're in training or before I go into that you have to understand that if they're going to medically chapter you out of the army, they're going to want to do it before you leave the initial entry training pipeline, whether that's basic and AIT or OSA. All right. Before you get to your first unit of assignment, it is super duper easy to discharge you from the training sites versus after you complete and successfully graduate and move on to your first unit of assignment. So when you're in basic training, I say all that to say this, when you're in basic training, you have to ask yourself, am I hurt or am I injured? And there's a major difference there. It is common. It is known. It is perfectly normal to hurt when you sneeze, laugh, or cough the first week or so of basic training. Because even if you're in shape, for most people, you're going to be sore. You're going to feel muscles in your body you had no idea existed or you have soreness and tightness of muscles that impact common things like standing up, sitting down, squatting down, whatever. Let's just say you're going to have muscles that you never knew existed. All right. Thank you about that, Taekwon. But with that being said, am I hurt or am I injured is what you need to ask yourself because... The moment you say that you want to go on sick call because you feel like you're injured or you just want to check the box or let me go this way, right? Because the mirror effect, I think, or whatever. But anyway, check the box that, you know, you're A-OK. -okay. Let's say you grew up and, you know, mommy always took you to the doctor like you Achoo! and you sneeze sideways and, and your mom's like, hey, got to go to the doctor. That's not going to be the best method for you throughout the training cycle. All right. So, again, ask yourself, am I hurt or am I injured? Because when you go on sick call. Or you say you want to go on sick call. And let's say the next morning you're like, I'm Gucci. I'm good. I don't want to go. Your drill sergeant's going to look at you like, I don't care. You're going. Because they cannot deny you to go. And once you say that you, you seek medical attention, they are legally obligated to get you to that doctor to be evaluated for whatever ailment issue that you are expressing at the time. And if during that visit they decide... That you are a no-go at this station. Thank you, but you got to go home. You don't have to go home, but you got to get up out of here. And they will medically chapter you out of the military. Just like that. Okay? Here's an example. Story time. There it was. 2001. At basic training. For a good 45 minutes, we were getting smoked doing the dead man's crawl. Which is basically... If you're familiar with the 
I, I forgot what it's called. So when you're doing like the extended flex, when you extend your stomach down and you push your hips to, to, to the ground and you got your toes pointed to the rear laces down and, and your arms are locked out and your head is straight. So you're like, you're like a, a, a yoga pose. I don't know what it's called. Plow maybe. I don't know. Anyway, that's the position that we were in and we had to waddle like a walrus around the barracks as a form of punishment. I don't remember what we did, but this guy started getting hip pain and just to check the box, went on sick call. Guess what? Hairline fractures got sent home. All right. Now I'm not saying you should stick it out. If you're legitimately injured, I don't think it is worth the squeeze for the juice because at the end of the day, you could always come back once you're fully healed and recovered. Obviously, you have to get through MEPS again. But if it's something minor, you can come back. It's not that big of a deal. But yes, whether it's during or after training, you, you're fully covered. All right. But just understand that if you go there and they determine that you have to go home, you're going to have to go home, unfortunately. So just keep that in the back of your mind when you decide to go on sick call. You've been warned. Godspeed. All right. Moving right along to Poppy. Says paperwork got submitted yesterday. Just wait to hear back for my waiver. Hoping to leave soon. All right. All right. May the waiver guys be in your favor. Gary Larson. Also, if I join the Army and decide after four years, can I transfer into the Air Force? Because I am 40 right now as I am waiting to finalize MEPS and join active army 39 is a cap uh at the u.s air force training or joining yeah okay so gary you're active duty right so unless you can work out some sort of direct lateral transfer from active army to the air force you're gonna run into some risks here and this is a, a video that i want to do in the very near future for People are looking to leave active duty, but I'm going to save that for that video. But what I'm trying to say is don't get out of active duty army to then try to get into the air force. I don't know how you'd work it out in active duty. I, I, it, it's a lot easier when you're guard and reserve and you're trying to do that. Cause then you can, you know, obviously talk to the recruiter and all that good stuff. But, um, yeah, it's just, if you have to go back through MEPS again, like you're just gonna get risk. You're gonna you're gonna take the risk of being denied re-entry into the military. Like you're in the service. You can stay here for 20 years. But if you get out to try to get back into another branch of service and you have to go through MEPS, it's kind of like a, a mixed martial arts fight or a boxing fight. You're leaving it up to the refs. Refs is like MEPS. And what happens when you leave an active duty branch of service is a lot of times your buddies will be like, yo, man, you got to get that D VA disability. You know what I'm saying, man? And before you know it, you got more than 30% and you're not allowed back in. And even if you had 30%, which is not, I mean, is like, at least for the guard, it is the cap. Like we can't take you in anything more than 30% of uh, disability, right? But aside from that we still have to prove to MEPS that even though you're receiving disability even if it's less than 30% you're still eligible to join and be physically fit or, or meet the procurement standards of joining the military again so you really gotta di dial it in like if, if, if I don't even know why you're going army if you want to go air force like I don't know if there's a rhyme or reason but if air force is where you want to be then go air force right now don't do the army because with Genesis in play and all the other FF games that the system is playing right now, you don't want to risk it for a biscuit you're going to lose. All right? Just saying it. Uh, Super Breaker says, is there a website where I can see the unit stations in the state for the National Guard of Florida? <sighs> hmm. I've never tried to look that up. We used to have a poster way back in the day, but maybe NationalGuard.com? Maybe? Not really sure, but yeah. We got Johnny Jones. Thank you for your uh, service. I appreciate the info to my question. I will let you know how everything goes. I want to do anything 
with tanks and infantry. Tanks are probably, unless it's active duty, probably not going to be a thing in the guard, but definitely do infantry. Daniel or Danielle in the den. What if I'm 6'4 and I'm too tall? You're good to go. All right. Uh, Trimbley. Trumbly. I can't remember. Trimbley. Trumbly. Can't remember his name. He worked. Uh, he was a basketball player for the Nets in the New York Army National Guard. He recently, in the last year or so, went active duty. Maybe it could be two years. I don't know if his COVID messed up everything. But anyway, <laughs> I digress. 6'4, you're good to go. As long as we have boots that fit your feet, you're good to go. Mahek Parik. Is it possible or is it a possibility to move different states when currently serving the National Guard or do I have to wait until my term ends? You have to understand, my friend, that you are a full-time citizen and a part-time soldier, and it's called the interstate transfer. More easier now than ever. Like, if we were talking about, like, a decade ago, it would be a little bit more challenging. Still could be done. Your unit cannot deny you. So if you're moving from one state to another because of employment opportunities or maybe you just decide to pick up and move somewhere, the first moment you identify that you're, you're going to a new state, let's say uh, I'm retiring uh, in June of next year, Obviously, like 60, 90 days out, I'm going to be like, hey, listen, I'm moving to Florida. I don't know, whatever the case may be. But the sooner you find out, the better. But I did a whole video on it, and it's nothing more than an interstate transfer, and you do not have to uh, wait until the end of your term. So if life takes you somewhere else, then guess what? Go to that somewhere else, and you could do drills with a unit uh, of, uh, nearest your, home of re your new home of record in lieu of your drills back at home so you can still continue to get paid and remain in good standing because you still have service right you still have to you know have a good year and all that good stuff but that video will go into more details all right Rivera's clean cut lawn care says uh, any thoughts on the MS 25 Bravo and, and career opportunities what do you learn at AIT not sure what you learn in uh, AIT but I do know it deals with IT information technology and with that being said, 25 Bravo is a very, very good MOS, a very good stepping stone into cybersecurity and all that good stuff. You do get a lot of credentials, certificates and things like that, that are worth a lot of money out in the civilian sector. So if you're applying to a company and you already have these certs like A plus uh, Cisco and some other stuff, I don't remember off the top of my head, but versus like someone else who has none of those things, that's what's going to separate you from the pack. Plus you have the, the job experience and training in that field. So that is a very good MOS. Matt Too Much says, also, I'm going in as a specialist E4 with my degree. Do I wear E4 insignia day one or after basic? Thanks so much. At basic, you'll receive your rank, and it is what it is, and you will wear your rank. Joshua says, can you get promoted from referral after you finish basic in EIT? Yes, I, I need to do a video on this because I don't think that either A, people are aware of it, or B, they don't care, or C, no one's talking about it. And I know I have not been talking about it. And uh, let me highlight you for a second. So right now, while the recruiting crisis is going on, momentarily, while we're in this uh, storm of recruiting crisis, right? Every branch of the army, component of the army, rather, sorry, component of the army, if you refer somebody and you are not the rank of special C4, you can rank up one more rank for each person you refer into the army. They have to sign a contract. Okay. Hang on one second. I, I just saw your comment. I love my DJ too. So I love my DJ tube. Um, what do you mean Super Friday is trolling? He's, I only see one question that he asked, which is if you live in the Philippines, can you join the U.S. Army? And there was like one other thing that was retracted by that person, but I'm not seeing anything else. I'm going to have to monitor it, but.
Keep it respectful, people. All right. All right. So. Yeah, so. And you get a federal recruiting award on top of that. So you get a, a ribbon that you can wear in your dressing uniform. It's an it is a federal award. So you get that for the first one and you can rank up up to specialty four, where previously you would only be able to recruit. I mean, uh, be advanced to the rank of private first class E3, but now you can make it to E4. All right. So with that being said, Mason Davis stopped by the recruiting today, got or got to get medically cleared, but built the packet and did my fingerprints. Hell yeah. Good luck to you. And uh, hopefully you get in soon. Thomas Yoel, I'm prior enlisted Marine. Uh, the recruiter is trying to push for me to transfer into the active as an E5. And if that would shoot and that I would choose my job at MEPS really want to go Germany is there a low chance um I mean I'm not an active duty recruiter to know firsthand but obviously you can ask for it as long as they have the MOS that you're coming in for so you're gonna be subjected to the prior service business rules so check out this link that's coming in the chat box right now and uh yeah so you're probably gonna have to go through basic training again so you're definitely gonna have to watch this video prior service basic training check that out as well and it's also linked on any there with the business, prior service business rules but but you're gonna be fine all right now i know that active duty is pushing active duty but at the end of the day you have to do what your heart is telling you so if you want to go active duty then go active duty if you want to go guard or reserve then go guard or reserve all right. I'm not sure what your reasons are for joining, but you got to join the right component of the army for the reasons that you say they are not because of what they say. So I am a recruiter, right? That's my full time job. I took a vow myself that when I decided to become a recruiter back in 2004, that and I'm still recruiting to this day. So over 19 years worth of experience and I've stayed true to this the entire time. All right. I am at, uh, I am a huge, what am, how do I say this? I guess I, I'm a huge advocate for just giving you the information to help you make a well-informed decision with little to no influence or definitely no manipulation. Like when I went through the recruiting process between 2000 and 2001, when I sat down with different recruiting stations and dealt with different recruiters, I felt like a number, a piece of meat basically. And they're, a bit, their inability to make me feel like my best interest was at heart and to address and answer my questions. Like I'm, I was already served. Like I knew I was joining. I just needed somebody to break it down to me, Barney style, answer my questions and make me feel like you actually care and are genuine with your responses. So I took a vow that when I became a recruiter, that I was going to be informative. I was going to be knowledgeable. I was going to help you and help you make the right decisions for your reasons, not my reasons. Like I get paid regardless if you sign a contract. So that's why I never understood why recruiters do that. If you take care of the applicant, the applicant will take care, care of you. Or at least the intent is that if we take care of you, even though you go somewhere else, that eventually down the road, if Johnny Snot Nose is looking to join and the, you know, they'll throw them your way because you did the right thing for the applicant. Anyway, I went down the rabbit hole, but... Good luck to you and, uh, you know, good luck. Tony Ministro says, my recruiter sold my ASVAB test score. Hasn't popped up yet. Why is that? I'm supposed to do the physical next week. So you got to talk to your recruiter. I has no idea because uh, I got the test results immediately after everyone tests. I mean, obviously, once in a while, there's a glitch in the system, but there wasn't one as of today or yesterday or any time this past week. Ty Quinn Campbell says OSUT. OSUT is one station unit training. I don't see any other comment here, so I don't know what that if that's attached to something else that never showed up in my end, but that's what that stands for. We got the Great White says keep reading there, going back to the APFT and ditching the ACFT. What's your thoughts on that? I really, for the love of God, I hope that they don't go back to the APFT. I think the Army Combat Fitness Test is what it needs to be. 
It's a better way to assess your physical capabilities for combat. The APFT, the old version, is, is not combat related, right? That's one. Two, for those who don't know what this person's talking about, there are two things, I believe, last time I checked, that are up at Senate. And that is to bring back the old Army physical fitness test to make that the 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 new standard because it was it would, it's cheaper you could do it anytime anywhere and uh versus the army combat fitness test which is is heavily involved in coordinating and planning and executing and, and you can't do it at the drop drop of a dime and it takes a lot of people effort and equipment that costs a lot of money they already spent probably like over a billion dollars on equipment but i digress i do agree with the so one is one thing is that they want to bring back the APFT, and the other thing is is to raise the minimum standard to the Army Combat Fitness Test, which I do agree. Listen, right now I am probably the the fattest I've ever been in the Army, pardon my French, but I still pass the Army Combat Fitness Test, and I have not consistently worked out. Like other than me rucking for like over twelve weeks straight, and I was doing great. I was at like about three hours. Uh, on the sand like three hours and like 15 minutes right that, that's hard to do three uh 12 miles on the beach but uh was rocking uh, with a 35 45 pound plate on my back but um like every time i go to work out i injure myself and like i have not consistently been working out with either body weight exercises or or lifting weights and if, if i could pass the army combat fitness test like that like it needs to be more challenging i hate to say it but they need they need to leave the the splint splint or sprint drag carry alone. They don't make that harder because that's hard enough as it is. All right, that sucks the soul out of you. If you know what I mean, you know what I'm saying. But um, everything else could be a little more challenging. <clears throat> Hashtag I'm just saying. Those are my thoughts, and uh, I hope that the Army Combat Fitness Test stays. But we'll see. Time will tell. Actually, you know what? To add to this. I think that we need to adopt what the Marine Corps do. They have their PFT, physical fitness test, which comprises of three miles, uh, crunches, and pull-ups or pushes or push-ups. They do that once a year, and then they have their combat fitness test, similar to like the Army combat fitness test that they do with their like fatigues, like our 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 variant of the OCPs, right? I think we should have both. We do the APFT once a year and the Army Combat Fitness Test on the other side of the year. That's just me. Uh, Var Thayer says, it is random. Hang on. Is it random what basic training facility you attend or does it depend on your MOS? So at the time of contracting, what they're looking for is a basic training graduation date and an AIT start date that are within two week, uh, within two weeks of each other. And as long as more than one option pops up, you're going to pick and choose when you leave in the next three to four months. If there's only one option, then that's your only option. And if there's no ship date available, then guess what? You either come back another day to see if one is available at that time, or you change your MOS and choose another ship date. Corey says, just got my packet approved. Go for my physical on Monday. Is it normal to enlist a different day than the physical? Just curious why I'm doing it in steps. Seems everyone uh, bangs it out at once. Honestly, this is going to be applicant dependent and recruiter dependent. So I'll tell you the pros and cons of this. Some people like to do step processing and some people like to go for the bang, right? So there's several different ways that we could do this. We could do all at once where if we give you the PICAT test and you score ex uh, exceptionally well and you are, we have not identified any type of medical issues, law violations, so on and so forth. Like basically you're a squeaky clean, simple pre-screen type applicant and you scored really well on the PICAT, then yes, we could offer you same day processing where you knock out the ASVAB test and the medical exam and your contract all in one day, hence the name same day processing. Now, we don't always use that because a lot of times, depending on your maps and how busy they are, at least in or Hamilton, they're extremely busy and it's not uncommon for you not to uh, complete your contract on the same day just because they run out of time. So with that being said, it's, typ it's typical to do one of these other two options, which is test one day, 
next day medical or phys only physical only medical only so for civilians i like to use the word uh medical only because when you say physical only which is what we refer to in, in the military world people think physical fitness and that's not what we mean so it's test next day medical only or test medical and contract the next day so if i have a rock solid applicant that's like sign me or like put me in coach you know like dead set like 1000 percent sign me up put me in coach type mentality then i'm gonna do test next day medical only, or i mean medical and contract providing you have no issues but if you're like eh, i don't know still there eh, whatever uh <laughs> I'm going to do test next day physical only. Then we'll talk about the MOSs and the job skills and opportunities that we, uh, uh, we could afford so that you could be afforded to. And we take it from there. And then we schedule another day for the contract. So it really depends on the recruiter and the applicant, mostly the applicant and then the recruiter. And it, yeah, there you go. I love my DJ tube. Not sure what that means, but alrighty then. When do you go to MEPS after taking the ASVAB test? That's between you and the recruiter. Sometimes people have medical issues or law violations or something along those lines. And um, it's going to prevent you from going right away to MEPS. So if you have any type of medical issue or something in the past, that's going to be a complex pre-screen which means that MEPS has to authorize you to go to do medical first after they look through your electronic medical records and any medical supporting documents that we submit as part of the complex pre-screen. But if you're a simple pre-screen, like you're a healthy mother flower and never been to a doctor other than your annual checkup, then uh, too easy, lemon squeezy. We'll make it happen. You know what I'm saying? So we got Rivera's clean cut long care at 1944. We got one. And yeah, where is it? We had a super chat coming in from Luis Rodriguez. There we go. Hell yeah. All right. And we got Jorge Flores. All right. Thank you so much. Appreciate you. <laughs> All right. I'm trying to use these sound effects. Anyway, I'll get better at it. Jorge Flores, I appreciate you. Thank you so much for the super chat. Considering the reserves and the National Guard, I am in Oregon. My MOS is 12 Tango. I heard the Guard is broke right now. Training schools canceled for my state. So, um, there's a new feature here. So I'm gonna use it. Maybe not. All right. So, when you say heard that the training schools are canceled for your state in Oregon who's telling you who's giving you that information let's look at it through that lens first and then we'll talk about this but thank you for supporting the channel appreciate you a lot it means the world to me reddit says it now the people on Reddit, are they like recruiters poisoning the well, like just planting the seed in there and letting everybody marinate that or, or whatever? Like, I mean, I could find out. All I gotta do is call some recruiters and off the record find out for you. So Jorge Flores, I know you're getting your, your information from Reddit. And uh, that's a good place to get like in the gutter type information, but it, it's not always trustworthy. But uh, like I have no skin in the game. I don't know what Oregon looks like as far as funding is concerned, but um, hit me up on my direct messages on Instagram. I'll reach out to some people in Oregon and I'll find out for you because I'm curious because that doesn't happen often. Like I remember during COVID, but it wasn't a funding issue. Well, maybe some of it was funding because a lot of the money was allocated for like COVID missions and stuff like that. But it was more or less uh, just playing catch up with all the schools because COVID uh, stopped everything for like over a year, almost two years, give or take. And uh, I know that the states have been uh, playing catch up just like the rest of the army. But um, yeah, 
<clears throat> I haven't seen your response yet. So yeah, just direct message me on Instagram. I'll put my link here. Right. Got another super chat coming in from Luis Rodriguez. As I've score 83, what kind of jobs do I need to apply for the National Guard? 83 is great. That is really, really good. But I'm kind of confused too. What do, you, what do you mean like what kind of jobs do I need to apply for National Guard? So when you're applying for the military, it literally does not require you to have any type of work experience or history in any field to come into the military. So when you're joining the military, we're assessing you on your aptitude through the ASAP test. And the ASAP test is an aptitude test to figure out based on what you've learned through real real world experiences and classroom instruction, what job skills are you, do we feel based on your results, capable of learning and being good at? And then we filter out that list based on your citizenship status, if you have a driver's license, if you qualify for a secret clearance, meaning that you don't have any finance issues in the past like i don't care about your credit score all right but do you have like charge-offs bankruptcy uh collections late payments things like that that's going to impact eligibility for uh any type of clearance type position it's the that type of thing all right but um yes yeah, so hopefully that addresses your question and uh appreciate the super chat Excuse me. Got nothing back from Flores either. All right. Shoot, I forgot where I was. Oh, Luis Rodriguez says, Haha, yeah, sorry, I meant that kind of M- kind of MOS are available or needed. Oh, yeah, yeah. You're so basically, here, I'll, I'll post. Oops. Let me close this out real quick. Accidentally opened up my notes. All right. So check out this video. And I think this video will probably address a lot of your questions and concerns. It's titled, What Jobs Do I Pre-Qualify For After I Pass the ASAP Test? And that will answer all your questions right there. And I'll probably go in a lot more detail than what I could do at the moment. Now, where was I? scrolling scrolling as i'm scrolling up do me a favor y'all and like this video appreciate you all 69 of you that are here right now Ministro Osa, yep, getting closer. The Great White talking about ACP, yep. Is there any I think I was right here. Corey says or asks, just got my packet approved for my physical Monday. Is it normal to enlist in a different day? Oh, yeah, we already talked about that. Uh, I love my DJ tube says, when do you go to maps after taking the asset test? Oh, yeah, we talked about that. Hang on. <laughs> Hang on, hang on, hang on. All right, so we, I think we're right here. The Great White. Some take the ASVAB at MEPS. Some take it uh, take a written test over a computer test, which is what I did. Yeah, you did what we call a MET site, an alternate test site, not at MEPS. And uh, that was at 1944. But yeah, that's perfectly normal. So is it 19? So we got to go 1945. We'll round them in when I come back because we got another super chat coming in from Ignacio Reyes. Appreciate you. Thank you so much for supporting the channel. Goes right back in here, and uh, it means a world to me. And he says he or she says 75 days into enlisting. How long does it take? How, how long does what normally take? So it sounds like you're in the enlistment process, and it. 
from day one till now it's been 75 days and how long does it take before you get a contract it sounds like you have a medical and or a moral issue right do you need a uh do you have law violations and uh or do you have medical conditions or the combination of thereof which one is it because it you should be able to get in in less than 30 days all right and i will come back and once you uh post that i will come back and address that but for now let me get back up here so i can play some catch up not the red stuff Random man. All right. So are recruiters notified if you don't make it through basic? Yes. Eventually when you come back <laughs> or at least for the guard, I don't know about anyone else. Ignacio says I need a tattoo waiver. Sent it up four weeks ago. Yes. Sometimes they take time. Uh, are you active duty and, and, and reserve or do, are you processing for the national guard? Let me know. And that goes for anybody. When you ask me a question like that, it does help to let me know what component of the army you're, you're joining as well. It just makes it easier for me to, to respond quicker and faster. Uh, let's see. Marwan Kareem says, you are the greatest of all time. Sergeant. Oh, hang on. I know you. Yes. All right. Cool. Appreciate the compliment. I, I don't feel like I'm the greatest, but I do my best. And I appreciate the compliment. Thank you. Joe's Niel says, question, if I move to a different state and start the army process, will MEPS uh, in that state see my medical records uh, through Genesis? Yes. And it will do. they will do a MEPS to MEPS pull. So they'll transfer your electronic medical records from your previous MEPS and directly pull it into the new MEPS. So there's no way of hiding anything if that's what you're uh, leaning towards. That was this person right here. So I didn't even highlight it on the screen. Ignacio says, thank you for all your help. You're very welcome. Active duty, aiming for 11 Bravo. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, then you should be able to get that approved because they pretty much bend over backwards for that because that's a hard, not necessarily a hard MOS to fill, but it's not like everyone's rushing to do infantry. Uh, but active duty, let me t I, like, I don't know where your tattoos are, what, what it is, but I remember a guy uh, that it re recently shipped out for active duty that I did. Well, anyway, long story short, I'll skip all that stuff. But he had a letter on each finger on the knuckle right here, like all through here. And his entire hand was filled with tattoos on both hands. So the salute hand and the non-salute hand. And uh, they approved his wa uh, waiver like a champ. He even had some tattoos on the neck, I believe. I don't remember I don't remember all the details, but he, had, he was tatted up. And they approved his waiver to go infantry nonetheless, too. So I think it'd be fine. It's just a waiting game because that's a DMPM level waiver. So they take forever. <sighs> Is split up only for ROTC. That's too complicated to give a direct answer about. So it really depends on your, your unique circumstances. So I would say it's best to talk to your recruiter. I did a, a, a split training option video here that will give you the gist of it. But understand that once you sign your SMP, so if only if and only if you're going into your junior or senior year and you're going to be a contracted ROTC cadet, then you won't do... Um, as long as you have basic camp done, then you won't need to do basic training. Or if you do basic training, you won't need to do basic camp. If one will watch the other. And because you signed an SMP contract for ROTC, you won't do an AIT because you're not going to be an enlisted soldier. So they're not going to waste the money and send you to AIT. Your whole focus in ROTC is to be non-deployable so you can focus on graduating and getting commissioned as a second lieutenant. So split training option, you, 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 there's nothing to split. Now, depending on the time of year you're joining, let's say it, like now, and you don't have basic camp done, then you'll do basic training before the fall semester. And then if you're starting your fall semester in your junior year this fall, then you'll sign your SMP contract. And because you just did basic training this, this coming or this summer right now that we're currently in, which is almost over, then you would not be required to do basic camp. So hopefully that makes sense. I almost forgot like what time of the year we're at right right now, but mm. 
We got another super chat, so I'm gonna come back to Jaden at 1945. Just remind me, 1945. All right, so we got do, 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 do. Rivera's clean cut uh, lawn care for five dollars. Appreciate that. Thank you very much. I in oh hang on, we got we got this. Yay! There we go. <laughs> All right, so. He enlisted, he or she enlisted as a PV2. When do I get promoted to PFC? After six months. So if you're doing it right through the normal time and service and time and grade, right? Then from E1 to E2, six months needs to pass before you have that automatic eligibility to the next rank. Once you're in E2, which you are now, after six months, you meet the automatic eligibility to advance to the next rank. A, 41, a DA form 4187. Request for action still needs to be signed off by your commander to authorize you to advance to the next rank, but that's when it will happen. Now, if you're in the training site at that time, if you're not part of the top 10% of your class, then your drill sergeant probably won't advance you to the next rank because, you know, the entire focus is about getting through basic training. So try to be in the top 10% while you're at the training site. Uh, then you'll advance when, when you're eligible. But sometimes it'll just automatically happen and the system will do it and you'll start to get paid as an E3 or whatever. But you just haven't gotten orders because, again, the DA form 4187 needs to, to be processed and all that good stuff. But, yeah. Hopefully that makes sense. What did I say? We were at 1945 or 9? 49, I think it was. No, 45. Jaden, here we go. Jaden Hamilton, I am going to basic training Fort Benning on August 15th. I learned a lot uh, more about what to do in basic training thanks to you and Army Strong. Hua freaking Luya. Be all that you can be, as they say in the Army right now. All right, so uh, congratulations and uh, good luck in basic training. Uh, Fort Moore is what it's called now, not Fort Benning. And uh, I'm glad that you found some sort of um, knowledge and what have you through my video so just have to help help out in some small way appreciate you we got marwan saying uh shipping out to fort jackson october 3rd i left for basic training october 14th perfect time to ship in my opinion adrian avila says will i get a medical exam at basic training yes in the way i described it here in this video at the reception video talk about everything that you're going to experience while you're there medically all that stuff Jaden also says, I guess Fort Benning is now Fort Moore. I don't like that. I like the name Fort Benning. I totally and utterly agree with you. I think it's a, a, a misappropriation of funding. I think it was stupid to change the name. Nobody gives an F. Probably no one even knew that it was whatever. Like it's. All right. I digress. Moving right along. <laughs> Marwan Kareem says, will reception review my medical record again? No, they will not pull your Genesis records, but they will upload new records into the system. Now, if you go on sick call, one thing I forgot to mention earlier when we were talking about are you sick or you're injured? If you go to sick call for being sick or injured, they will pull your re Genesis records again just to verify that you don't have a pre-existing injury or issue from your past. But uh, again, in general, just like I said in my videos, and you should probably watch these just so that you're aware. All right. So you can stay in the know, <clears throat> but they don't pull your Genesis again while you're out there, unless you give them a rhyme or a reason to. <clears throat> All right. What was your MOS? I have a few. I started my career as a 71 Lima, which is an administrative assistant, which in today's time when they revamped it to 42 alpha human resources specialist i reclassed as a 21 foxtra as a crane operator as an engineer which is now because of my rank a 12 series they converted from 21 series to 12 series and now I, because of my rank it's a 12 november which is a general construction equipment operator and uh, i am now a 79 tango a recruiting and retention nco or not commissioned officer and i am drill sergeant qualified Steve says, haven't tuned in for a couple months. Did you drop your retirement packet? Not yet. 
And uh, if so, what's next? As of right now, I can retire July 27th of next summer, all right, of 2024. But because I procrastinated and did not transfer my post 9-11 GI Bill benefits to my kids in a timely manner, I got a reminder email recently letting me know I still had two years left. So I'm probably going to stick around to about May of 2025. And, uh, you know, if some things change and maybe I'll, you know, staying into the wheels fall off like I originally intended. But if not, if I'm still feeling the way that I do, then I'll probably uh, retire at that time, which is what my intent is currently. Uh, I am a lot better now. I am a lot, a lot better. And uh, I'm just in a, a better headspace than I was a few months, uh, yeah, a few months back. But um, yeah, man, you can only go up, right? <laughs> but thanks for following up, man. Appreciate that. Jose Ivan Escalante says, hashtag Team Swartz. Appreciate that. I want to enlist in the National Guard, but I sadly hold a GED. What's a passing score for the ASVAB? GED or not, as long as you can score a 31 or better, you can sign a contract if otherwise eligible. Leaded Galaxy 966 says, I'm looking into becoming a small arms repair as a 91 Foxtrot for those who are curious. I have been running recently and was thinking of buying a weighted vest for upper body training. I think that would definitely help, especially for like walking uh, close to an hour a day. That that does a few things, right? It's slow, steady state cardio. It's uh, it's good for fat loss. And then secondly, it's going to condition your bone density and your feet and your legs for rucking, right? So that's just one thing that you could look into. But yes, overall, just working out with a weighted vest is definitely going to help you for sure. We got Paul Wilson here with the hashtag Team Swords. Appreciate that. I'm waiting on an age waiver for National Guard, 43 years old, training high intensity. Hell yeah. I think I seen a message from you or somebody similar to you. Appreciate that. And good luck. I love my DJ too. Says, after taking the ASVAB test, when will you go to MEPS? Again, uh, this is going to be dependent on the applicant and any potential issues that may have uh, been identified and the recruiter. EKD123, are you allowed to buy moleskin at basic training to help prevent blisters or is that considered over-the-counter medicine? Haha. Uh, it's going to be site-specific, but in general, most places will allow you to purchase them at the uh, Troop Exchange store while you're at the training site. So yes, you could either bring them with you. Uh, again, site-specific or whether or not they let you keep it or keep it in your personal bag. But uh, yes, you can have those at the training site. Yeah, Jaden Hamilton says, on my ASVAB, I have a CO score of an 85, but I'm still being allowed to be an infantryman. Uh, what does, what, uh, that doesn't mean any, or make any sense as I need an 87, any reasons for why that could be. So we could do a telephonic waiver easily to, for five points, but currently right now, uh, uh, temporarily, I forgot when the cutoff date is for this. But they reduced it from an 87 to, I believe, a 77 to qualify for infantry uh, during this uh, recruiting crisis. So just be glad you got the job that you wanted. All right. That's it. Just be in there like swimwear. Make it happen. Ulysse Lagore says, why they bring the old PT test back? They're not bringing it back. They're talking about it. But I don't foresee that actually happening. And I hope it doesn't happen. Do you have any... Do you have to be fit to join the National Guard? No, we will help you get fit. Taekwon Campbell says cataracts. Yes, that'll definitely be an issue as well. Uh, Ulysse also says, is the salt salty increase more in the army? What do you mean salty? Like people being salty? Not sure what you mean by that. <clears throat> I mean, we're all going to have people griping and complaining if that's what you mean. Uh, Sun Chip says, can criminal records disqualify you? Yes, <laughs> absolutely. Hands down. Hard yes. I have a police report with my name in it, but uh, I'm not convicted of anything or held accountable for something. So like your name is in a report as like a, a witness or like you mean you've been arrested and you have a copy of your arrest report. I'm not really sure what you mean by your name was in a report like were you interviewed or something and, and, and they just wrote your name in there like as it like. Like I witnessed a car accident and I saw ABC vehicle hit into XYZ and so on and so forth. Like, not sure what you mean by that, but uh, 
yeah if if you were receiving the ticket or the arrest then yes you will have to answer for it Ulysse also says or asks, why do they yell during training? So that when we make the on-spot correction for that one individual trainee, we're yelling loud enough so that others around them who are making the same deficiency can un-F themselves and correct themselves so that we don't have to make 60 corrections for the same deficiency. That's why we yell all the damn time. Alexthetics. Now, the Marine Corps are on a whole nother level. Like, I laugh so hard when i watch these uh uh marine drill drill instructors screaming and just acting so weird to the trainees it makes no sense to me at all but uh alex thetics i'll come right back to you that was at 1955 we got another super chat coming in from Solid Soup. Interesting name. Appreciate you. Thank you so much for supporting the channel. Any advice for someone going into 90 Foxtrot Army in 2023? The general advice that I give to you is uh, just like I would give to anyone going to basic training. Stay the course. Stay focused. Stay driven. Stay motivated. Lean on your battle buddies. If you don't know what's going on, talk to your battle buddies to your left and right because you're all going to be doing the same exact thing. If you're feeling down, you're not alone. Lean on your battle buddies, okay? It's not a big deal. It's just basic training. It's easier now more than ever because you get your phones every dang week. Some locations like Fort Benning or Fort Moore and Fort Jackson right now, uh, for the most part, you're getting it twice a week now. Anywhere from like 30 to 90 minutes on Sunday and up to 30 minutes uh, on Wednesdays. But um, 91 Foxtrot, that's an easy job, all right? The Army literally has a technical manual, uh, Army regulation. They have, <laughs> we have a step-by-step -step how to for everything in the Army. Like you can't mess it up. As long as you pay attention in class, you take good notes, you read the material that you cover for the day, every night or over the weekends, you study for the test, you do, you know, you do your best and you work hard. There's no way you're going to fail. 91 Foxtrot is not a hard MOS to learn, All right, You'll be just fine. Just focus on surviving basic training mentally. All right. Obviously, it's going to be physical, uh, physically demanding. But in my in my opinion, I feel like the hardest part of basic training is the the mindset. But uh, you'll be fine. All right. Keep your head up. You got this. And uh, again, thank you for supporting the channel. Alex Stedek says, how close would I be able to serve if I live in New York and planning on enlisting the Army Reserve 31 Bravo? I'm, I'm not understanding your question. Close to what? How close would I be able to serve? So again, I'm going to post this video so you can go check it out. The ASVAB test determines, one, can you sign a contract with no exceptions by scoring it 31 or better? The other exceptions are like if you fail a test and you meet the qualifications for the 09 mic program, the flurry program, or the cat four option, right? Those are the three like exceptions to that policy. So 31 or better. That just means that you can sign a contract. If you score 50 and above, that will help you uh, pre-qualify for any type of incentives, meaning a bonus, a student loan repayment program, the GI Bill kicker, so on and so forth, right? Now, the line scores, right? So they take all the, the nine sections of the test and they average them out 10 different ways. Those are called line scores. The higher those scores are, the more job skills and opportunities will be afforded to you, right? I don't remember what the line score is and which one it is for 31 Bravo specifically, but as long as you meet the line score for that job, right? Then it could possibly be afforded to you in the Guard Reserve Active Duty. And then it's got to be within your geographical area. Like we have uh, two military police companies uh, here in the New York City area. We have them spread out throughout the state. So again, it, it it's very likely that as long as you meet the basic criteria, now you have to qualify for a secret clearance, got to be a U.S. citizen, you have to have a driver's license. So watch that video, and uh, if you're in New York City, 
or New York in general. I know a guy. Not going to mention any names, but uh, hit him up. This is uh, his Instagram channel link right here. The same. Oh, oh the great way uh, says out. Oh, yeah. Nice mug from Tycoon. Appreciate that. Rollin Marks teaches history. How hard is it to get approved for a waiver? Uh, that really, really depends on your unique circumstances, the documentation, the things that you did or didn't do from the past. And uh, yeah, it's a whole process. Ulysses says, how many vacation days can you take in the army? So if you're active duty, you get 30, day, 30 days of paid military leave. And some of the sometimes you can carry them over. Like right now, uh, you have to use or lose anything over the, uh, 60 days at the end of the year. So like I have over 60 days saved up. And uh, yeah, so Gage B. Hent says it, it depends on how many days. There you go. Uh, Prince Amun Speak says if you require a more waiver to get into the army, did the did that automatically disqualify you from getting a security clearance? Ninety nine percent of the time, yes. If you require Lydia Brooks, welcome back. Says. Question: I passed the ASVAB with around a 63. Can I join when I hand in my psyche evaluation and doctor's mental stability clearance notes? So would it be, uh, no, I will probably stop taking medication at around 41. Uh, I have seen people. I'm not sure what that means, but um, so I mean, I know you watched my video, Lydia, because you're all over my channel and I keep sharing the video with you, but I think you really need to sit down and actually watch the video. All right. I'm going to post it again. All right, Lydia. And I, I, I mean this in the nicest way possible. You have to go watch this video. Okay. Because especially if, if you're talking about medication, dealing with your mental stability, like anything that deals with your mental health, right? There's only three instances where medications will be authorized at time of enlistment which is one for is birth control b is for um hy hypothyroidism and uh hormonal therapy or whatever anything that deals with um transgenders right those are the only three instances where medications are authorized at time of enlistment so if you're currently on medication for anything other than those three things you're a no-go at this station. MEPS won't even entertain you. All right. So you pass the test. Great. But if you're currently on medication for anything else, like I said, you're going to get denied if MEPS catches it. Like if you don't talk about it and they don't see it, then it is what it is. But if they find it or you disclose it or they see it in the system, you're, you're not going to be able to join right now. You're more than likely not going to be allowed to, to come in for the medical exam. So oh, got to come back to 801. Got another super chat coming in from not too far. John S. Fabian. All right. Appreciate you. Thank you so much for supporting the channel. It means a lot to me. And it says, how likely can I get a waiver for my eyes? Again, it depends on the eye condition, how bad it is. And if it meets the basic, uh, if it does not exceed, again, it depends on the condition, honestly, how bad it is. It's, it's going to, it's going to be a, uh, situational right so i just posted it i'll post it again if you didn't see it the medical waiver process so i don't know what your medical condition is but uh good luck may the uh waiver gods forever be in your favor i'm like so behind schedule it's not even funny I gotta go back down now because we got another super chat and I'm pretty sure a comment's gonna follow, but there's no comment there yet, but I'll at least acknowledge it. We got Michael Lopez with another super chat. Appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Appreciate you. And um, I'll try to pay attention to see if you have a follow-up question here, but um, too much sodium in my eyes. I've never heard of that. The, the MEPS doctor said that or your personal doctor said that. So you have too much salt on the eyes. Weird. And I don't mean that in a bad way. I just, I've never heard of that before. Let's 
going back up to where I was. Yeah, that's definitely uh, maps. Interesting. I didn't even know they tested for that. That's a first for me. 19 years of recruiting, I've never heard of that. That's wild. That is wild, John. What's going on, John? You pissed the doctor off? I've never heard of that before. Jersey artist in uh, New, uh, New Jersey art, uh, whatever. Damn, I always forget your name. Are you still here? Have you heard, ever heard of that? South Jersey Artisan. Are you still here? Uh, there you go. There's your name. <laughs> all these, uh, I'm here, LMAO. <laughs> all right, all right. Yeah, you've been quiet for a little while. Um, yeah, I don't know if you've ever heard of that, but nope. Yeah, I never heard of that too, man. You must have pissed off the doctor or something. Hashtag, I'm just saying. I got another super chat, so I'm going to have to go back down to here. Deonta Palmer says, I went and took my psych consult Monday for the Army, and today it's Wednesday, and we ain't heard nothing from MEPS yet. How long do they take to come back? Sometimes it could take a week or so sometimes a couple of weeks or so to uh get back to you so you should be hearing something soon in the next week or so it is what it is just uh meps teaches you early about the military which is the uh the whole hurry up and wait thing you know what i mean guess it makes sense if they got a consult yeah absolutely maybe they yeah i guess yeah they probably saw something strange did the consult and then they identified it during the consult yeah that sucks man yeah, I don't know if that's waiverable or not. Like, I don't even, I've never even heard of that con that being a thing. So I don't know. I definitely have no experience with the, too much sodium of the eyes. No experience in that at all. Where was I? Oh so hard, uh, oh so hard, eighty six. Man, you guys got some of you guys got some weird names, man. South Jersey Arden says not during uh, basic eye exam. I know for eye consultations, it's usually a full exam. They find more things than absolutely. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Or maybe too much. Oh, I well salt crystallizes. Yeah, I can see that preventing your, your tear ducts from, from tearing up for sure. Yeah, Jaden, that's a, a really good question that you would have to ask your ophthalmologist. Got you with that name. <laughs> oh, yeah, man. Um, but oh, so hard 86. Hey, Sarn, can you see my questions? I can see this one. I, I don't see anything else. This is the first time seeing this. But uh, yeah, the great white. What kind of thing can disqualify someone from a security clearance? Uh, financial issues in the past, like late payments, bankruptcies, collections, basically any type of uh, irresponsibility with your finances from your past can impact your security clearance eligibility to include excessive negative debt, um, obviously moral violations, so any type of law violations, right? So if you've been arrested multiple times or any time, depending on... The circumstances like not, like i said 99 percent of the time any type of uh like misdemeanor or better like some minor non-traffic you know violation or two may not like impact it too much but like if you have like misdemeanors or higher forget it super friday says can you eat burger king in the army yes joe lee Wash Buckler says, I just passed phase two of the hardest phase in air assault school. It's just repelling in a 12 mile ruck, and I will get my wings. Hell yeah. But that's actually harder than airborne school for sure. Duckberry says, uh, Again, here we go. These weird names, man. I have a question for someone. You uh, can, hang on. I have a question for someone. Can you get a waiver if you have two cases and one dismissed case? They are uh, misdemeanors. Again, 
it, it is really going to boil down to the original charges and the final outcome or decision for each case and the unique uh, circumstances. It's going to be situational, right? Under normal circumstances, one to two misdemeanors can be waiverable, but again, it depends on uh, the charges and the outcome and the details are surrounding that. So your recruiter can definitely help figure out your um, eligibility from there with those documents. So Lil Ant says, I'm enlisting 19 Delta, plan to eventually go to sniper school, then to 31 Kilo. Sounds like a great plan. Super Friday says, if you live in the Philippines, can you join the United States Army? Only when you move to the United States and you are now a, a living or resident of the United States, like you live in the United States and you obtain a green card, the I-551. I cannot help you with immigration status. So if you're still here, this is the... Uh, message I send you all when you ask about stuff like that. So check that out. It's not a U.S. territory. So unfortunately, the Philippines is not one of the locations that uh, will get that exception. So with that being said, how bad is Genesis? I've heard uh, horror stories, but I have no medical record or criminal and I'm in great shape and no drugs. Are they more disqualified, DQ friendly or just strict on giving documents? Well, to me, it sounds like you don't have any issues, so you have nothing to worry about. So if you have medical stuff from your past, then it'll be an issue. But because you don't, it should be fine. Genesis won't get you. Now, if they identify something during the medical exam or you disclose something, so have that heart to heart conversation with your recruiter and, you know, make it happen. Buffalo Soldier says, hey, hashtag Team Swords. I am a prior service active duty Army 88 Mike, which is motor transport, a.k.a. truck driver, currently waiting for a submitted medical waiver for Atlanta, MEPS, and Georgia. How long is the wait to hear back? Also, can I pick my duty station for active duty? You can always request uh, wherever you want to be stationed and all that good stuff, but at the end of the day, it's going to be based on the needs of the Army. Now, if they're offering or extending the same option like they do for non-prior service where you get duty station of choice, then then it would be a possibility. Otherwise, it's based on the needs of the Army. But an active duty recruiter can definitely uh, uh, facilitate a more accurate and updated response to that. I am a National Guard recruiter. This is an active duty specific type question, but I could find out if you really want to. Direct message me on Instagram at Team Swartz, and I'll reach out to my active duty county parts to uh, get you a solid response. But uh, good luck at MEPS, and may the MEPS gods forever be in your favor. Jaden Hamilton says, do I have a disadvantage as an infantryman? I am 5'4". I mean, your stride's going to be short, but you'll be all right. I've seen short, skinny mother flower do just fine in infantry. It's all about mindset and your physical capability. So you're going to have to train. You just might have to train a little bit harder. You know what I'm saying? Great White, as a new listener who hasn't seen many videos, what do you think is causing the recruiting crisis? And do you think this is why a portion of the IRR was called? Really good question. I did a video on this. If you just look up, uh, I, well, first of all, welcome to my channel. Hopefully you subscribe and you stick around for a minute or two. But with that being said, um, I did a, a recruit. So if you go into the search bar and you type in Team Swartz Recruiting Crisis and you'll find my thoughts on the recruiting crisis. And uh, I'm going to have to do like a revisit to that video because there are several things that I discussed within that video that is actually happening. Um, since i posted that video so it's interesting to see that type of stuff but yeah but those are my thoughts so go check out that video i don't even know if i created a quick text did i uh i love my dj too says you have to be a you know, great white says Jaden. you know me. boppy says how quick can you leave after you get a contract at time of contracting, you're supposed to ship out within three months. Well, it used to be four months. Now I'm hearing like three months. So whatever. But within three to four months, you have to ship out. Alex Stedek says Army Reserve or Army National Guard. If I live in New York. Oh, yeah. I, got, I forgot to post this video. If you're still here, go check out this video. This Guard versus Reserve. Really good 52 minute, but it's jam packed with a lot of information. Some of the dollar amounts for certain things have obviously increased or decreased since then but definitely go check that out and then arng video um another good one would be national guard education i don't know if you're all about that or not 
that talks about the education benefits and such for the guard and the reserve but uh virtues says if i join national guard will i have to miss my first semester of freshman year in college uh, not really sure when you're joining it's going to be situational but your recruiter will let you know but uh like if you're joining now and you're planning on going to the fall semester if you're going i know for guard for sure we can get the exception to policy to ship you out in um january you're still going to miss a semester but again it really depends on when you're looking to join like are you a high school senior like what are we talking about here but um you're gonna miss a semester no matter how slice it dice it dress it up all that stuff you're gonna miss it but you're you're starting as a freshman so good news is that when you come back from training you can download or send your military transcript to your college and they will give you college credit for your military training so depending on the mos in which you signed up for they'll look at your transcript and anything that correlates with your major and minor in college they'll extract your military credits and convert those into college credits and you can get anywhere from like three all the way up to 20 semi credits again depending on your mos and how long your training is and all that good stuff uh, so definitely go check that out it's called your joint your joint service transcript all right, we got David Poopus in here. What's up? What's up? Hey, man. Long time no see. Salute. Hell yeah. Hashtag Team Sports. I'm one of my soldiers right there. All right. Um, and actually, you just reminded me. I got to call you about your sister. Um, and I got to follow up with her. I, I, I turned her on to a, a free ASVAB four-week course. So hopefully she's uh, doing that because it starts, I think, yesterday <laughs> or this week. But anyway, uh, moving right along to Mahek. Harek says, thanks for the insight. Anytime. That's not for me. Lonnie says, okay, okay, okay. I'm 17. I just finished enlisting into the Oklahoma Army National Guard. First drill coming up in a couple of weeks. Is there anything about uh, what goes on at drill that I should be aware of? Nothing major, all right? It's not basic training. It's just a taste of what's to come. But I did a whole video for you about the RSP or the Recruit Sustainment Program. So go check that out. Welcome to the team. Excellent choice, if I may say so myself. Go guard all day, every day. Hashtag I'm just saying. If not, do you, boo-boo. Uh, Doobie Dub 12 says, if I join with an option 40 contract, do you go to pre-RASP or straight to RASP? Usually you go through pre-RASP. Lydia Brooks continued, who are 40 in Jamaica? Okay. Not following. Sorry. Um, maybe next week. Penguin Master says, likelihood of a prior service army basic training waiver being approved. Uh, like what controls whether it gets denied or approved? Depends on the disqualification, honestly. It really depends on the uh, the disqualification. Uh, uh, unfortunately, I can't give you a solid response without uh, pertinent information. Jaden says, 19 years old and very socially awkward. Do I have to worry about guys my age being jerks? Should I try and prove something to them? Not worried about Joe Sarns, mostly other kids. Just be yourself, you know? And uh, I am mostly introverted, socially awkward, and uh, can be extroverted when needed, like being a drill sergeant, being a recruiter, giving classes, blocks of instruction, being here, talking to you guys. But uh, I am, at heart, an introvert. And when I say socially awkward, like, I don't know how socially awkward you are, but for me, it's I feel uncomfortable when I'm in a social event. Even if it's people I know very well, I, I do better in small groups, maybe more of a, like, one-on-one -on -one type of a deal. But, like, yeah, that's just me. But, uh, like, awkward as in, like, it, I feel like it's a, not stress, but it just feels like a lot of work to be social. <laughs> But anyway, moving right along. But to answer your question, it's going to be dependent. Don't do anything to prove anything. Because that, 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 that implies to me, like, you want to get physically aggressive towards them. And don't do that. Do not get into verbal or physical confrontations with anyone. Just uh, handle it at your level. Be assertive, but be professional. If you can't handle it between the two of you, you get your student leadership involved. If they can't fix it, then they get the drill sergeants involved and so on and so forth. All right, Luis Rodriguez says, H. Oh, so hard says, can I get an air assault prior signing my contract for the guard? Absolutely not. At least not in our states, in most states. Jaden says, should I be worried about being friendly to other privates and basic? 
uh i don't know why you be friendly but i mean you don't want to be an asshole like i'm not following what do you mean friendly yeah of course you want to oh yeah that's the socially awkward kid so yeah you definitely want to be a normal person like you know like i don't know what your definition of what friendly is but you want to be a team player you want to help it you want to help out your battle buddies okay Joe's Nael, why are you telling somebody pendejo? Like, makes no sense to me. Angel didn't even do anything to you. All right, so. <clears throat> Hey, just be yourself. Be cordial. Yes, be friendly, but not like friendly, like, hey, let's uh, be more than friends kind of deal. That's fraternization. You don't want to do that. All right. So if you want to be fit for basic training, the hater uh, BCT prep, this video will get you uh, pointed in the right direction. Uh, coming back to oh, so hard. You're not blocked. I go through oldest to the most recent. So I'll come back to you, Paul Wilson, at 2015. I got a new super chat coming in from Holo Hollow Life. All right, so we got a super chat from Hollow Life. Appreciate you. Thank you so much for supporting the channel. It means a lot to me. Question is, if I sign a Rep 63 and my state has an 11 Bravo bonus, do I get it because I have to go through 11 Bravo school or would I have to sign a contract for 11 Bravo? Your recruiter, because we don't have a uh, rep 63 here in my state. So that that's a, a unique circumstance that's not normal across the board because there's only four states that offer this. So I would be do, doing you a disservice by, uh, by giving you a solid response. So I'm going to direct you to your recruiter to find out because we don't have that in my state. Now I'm going to assume in my professional opinion that you would have to sign a contract for 11 Bravo with that bonus. But your recruiter will and should share that information with you, okay? Hopefully that makes sense. I know Angel didn't do anything to me, Sergeant Wu. <laughs> I don't get it. We got some sensitive people on here tonight complaining about people and they're not even doing anything wrong. Y'all need some thicker skin. Go army. <laughs> I can help you out with that thicker skin. All right, so here we go. Paul Wilson, I'm waiting for an age waiver for the National Guard. I'm 43 and capable of high intensity training. Can I buy my way in i can't control my age i want an opportunity to prove that i belong so waivers can be entertained up to 44 years old so you're not out yet you just got to find a recruiter that is willing to process the waiver so i've seen and heard people at 44 years old get a waiver and join so it really depends on your unique circumstances and what prevented you to join up until now all right, that's going to be pretty, be pretty much what they're going to be asking for. Like, why now? Why didn't you do this before? Like, if you if you said at 43 years old, I just got my green card. Well, now you have a legitimate, compelling reason to why you couldn't join before. Right. That's a meritorious reason. Right. It can't just be like, well, my mommy told me when I was 17 years old, don't do it. And now I'm 43 years old and I mustered up enough courage to do it. And I don't mean that in a disrespectful way. I'm just saying as like a, a crude example of what we go through as recruiters. But if you have a meritorious reason or like you, you, you've you done 20 years as a law enforcement agent, uh, law enforcement officer, and now you want to branch out and do something different, right? Then, yeah, obviously that could be a compelling 
Mary Tori's reason as well. So it really depends on unique circumstances and the rhyme or reason to why it took you so long to push the trigger or to pull the trigger for this opportunity. If that makes sense. Alex Howard says, Twenty years as a meat cutter. Mm, I don't know if that would. Uh, I don't know if that would cut it. But you never know. I mean, with the recruiting crisis, like, listen, if there's ever a time to join the military and request a waiver, with the likelihood of the waiver getting approved, now would be the time. You just got to find a recruiter that's willing to process the waiver. That's it. It's that simple. Well. Not that simple, but it's that simple. Alex Howard says, 20 year old, joining the army, but I'm waiting to do my physical, but my waiting for a clean THC drug test have not smoked in 47 days, still testing positive. Any tips? Yes. Uh, Woo, I'll send you the answers to the cyber awareness course. Oh, I, I just said that on the air, but yeah, I got the answers. <clears throat> But to answer your question, I did a, I, I talked about this in one of my previous live streams and I recently posted it a separate video. You can go look that up. Just look up team Swartz THC and you'll find the video. But essentially all I'm going to say in the video is to drink a gallon of water every day or more do at least cardio or sweat it out for like at least 60 minutes a day. Uh, do not consume any additional toxins like smoking of any type, whether it's vape or hookah or cigarettes, cigars, so on and so forth. Anything that's like smoke inside your body, whether it's uh, manipulated through uh, a machine or actual tobacco and alcohol and any other type of toxins that you could be consuming, like excessive, uh, excess caffeine, so on and so forth. Like, go check out that video. It'll go more into it, but it could take up to 90 days for it to clear your system, depending on how heavy you were and if it was mixed with other things and so on and so forth. And body fat also plays in a role of how long it leaves your body. So if you got... Like if you're skinny, if you're a skinny mother flower, then it'll come out of your system faster. If you got a little fluff on the on the, on the buff body, buddy, then uh, then it might take a little bit longer for you to uh, to get clean, right? So it, it it sits in the fat cells, but it's a urinalysis, so um, it is not uncommon for it to take sixty days or more for it to clear out of your system. Jaden says, <clears throat> I already chose my MOS, but I'm curious about what other job requires army personnel to be outside in the field or just outside in the field. On the field, in the field. I'm not sure what you mean by that. But anyway, in general, I never wanted to do an office job anyway. All I can say is go watch my video here. Jobs video and uh, check that out. And that'll probably address all your questions and concerns pertaining to that. Pablo G says, hey, so I'm overweight, but I want to join. I'm 180 pounds currently and trying to reach 160. Should I see a recruiter now or wait until I, the near the, the weight I speak to one? So I say, Pablo, to go and find your recruiter right now because with the 09 Mike body fat composition course, you could join right now as long as your body fat does not exceed your maximum allowable body fat for your age and gender. And you can join now instead of later. All right. Go check it out. And you can let the benefit of the body fat version versus the academic version is the body fat version locks in an MOS of choice where you don't get that uh, afforded to you when you're joining to the academic version. So if you don't know what I mean by that, go check out this video. I did a whole video about the future soldier prep course or the zero nine mic program. It's right there. It'll tell you all about it. B Nate says, I really need help with rejoining. I left the army out of boot camp four years ago and my re-entry code is a three, but somehow my recruiter can't find my medical records. Do I need those records? Um, so it's, is that, uh, if you're still here, cause it's been like almost an hour, is that military medical records or civilian medical records. So if you're not here just for, you know, clarification purpose for everyone else that's listening, and if you're prior service, you don't need to worry about sourcing your medical records because with MHS Genesis, the MEPS can see all military medical records. So if you've ever processed at even at MEPS, your initial medical exam to join the military, 
they will have access to your medical records from that point forward. So anytime you process at a military medical facility, all your records are visible. But if it's through the civilian sector, what you're talking about, uh, then that's between you and your recruiter and uh, your recruiter should know what to do as far as uh, getting memorandums from the records department to say that there are no records found. And then you might want to get like a, a notarized handwritten note from mom explaining what happened, so on and so forth and hope and pray that the waiver gods uh, see it in your favor. You know what I mean? But uh, yeah, good luck. Appreciate you and uh, see you next week. The Great Whites. Oh, that's right. for me. The little ant says, I got a 97 on Yazza, but I seen you need 100 plus for sniper school and seen that 31 kilo wants multiple years experience before taking handlers. Yes. Uh, 31 kilo is usually a lateral transfer after you've been at 31 Bravo for some time. But as far as the, the 100 plus in a sniper school, that's uh, news to me. I had no idea about that. I know in the guard, it just boils down to can you hit 40 out of 40 at the range? And then they'll probably test you out from there um, to see if they, they accept you into the sniper squad. But anyway, uh, yeah, if that sounds pretty cool, though. I didn't know that. You don't know what you don't know. You know what I mean? So uh, Luis Rodriguez. Yeah, sorry. I meant uh, what kind of MOS are available or needed. That's going to be a component of the army dependent, and it's going to change on a daily, weekly, monthly basis and quarterly. Brady the daddy, how do you feel about the Air National Guard? I think that it is a really good option if that's what you want. So I'm not going to be here to tell you that the Army is better than the Air or the Air is better than the Army. Listen, as long as you're willing to join the military, I don't give an F where you join. Okay? It, it all boils down to what is going to meet your needs, wants, and desires, help you achieve your goals cheaper, better, and faster. And a lot of the benefits and features of joining the military are going to be consistent across the board, no matter which branch of service you go into. So really, it's going to boil down to preference. What is the, for you, what is the difference? Like, what is your deal breaker? What is it that attracts you from one over the other? And the biggest thing is deal breakers. So I would say, check out this video here, right? It, it It's titled, Don't Join the U.S. Army Until You Watch This Video. And that is because... I talked to you about the steps that I would suggest to anyone looking to join the military and you can use this to help navigate one branch over the other in your decision making process. So definitely go check out that video. Lydia says, what is going on with the MEP station in Boston? No clue. I'm not in Massachusetts, so I couldn't tell you. Uh. <clears throat> I made a 36 on the ASVAB. I am able to join as an army infantryman, which is what I wanted in the first place. But what other jobs could I have gotten with that score? So again, the 36 that you just talked about that you scored, that is your AFQT score it has no bearing on the MOSs. Okay. This video here, I keep posting this video on here, but you got to go watch it. All right. It's the line scores that are going to determine the MOSs that you pre-qualify for. And then we filter out that list based on clearance eligibility, US citizenship and driver's license. And then depending on the component of the army you're trying to go into, whatever, that, the video will go over it in more detail. All right, but get a copy of your line scores and then go visit that video. And then go into the description to click on the Excel sheet to plug in your line scores because the website on goarmy.com uh, that walkthrough I do in the video of plugging in your line scores to figure out what you pre-qualify for, they revamped the website. That's no longer a thing. So to help you out, I put an Excel sheet in the description area. Just plug in your line scores, click if you're a U.S. citizen, if you have a driver's license or not, and that will help you uh, look at your op options from there or opportunities from there. Sun Chips, in terms of criminal records, what exactly are they looking for? Everything including police reports or is it just convictions, sentences, etc.? I want to get an 11 Bravo for active duty army in two years. So again, it is going to depend on your record, all right? Yes, we look at your original charges, what was the final outcome, and how many of whatever you have to, and then depending on what it is, you may just require a suitability review or or, or, or a moral waiver, or maybe you're just not qualified at all because even with everything, if you add it all up, it just means that you need Jesus, <laughs> all right? You just needed to make better decisions growing up and you made some bad ones, but hopefully you qualify for a waiver and you're good to go, all right? So good luck to you. Let's see.
Ignacio, you're very welcome. The Great White says, well, you want to be in the field. You definitely will be. The, uh, that's not for me. There's a whole sidebar conversation going on here. So I'm just trying to figure out what is for me to address for y'all. Gabriel uh, Acosta says, I got a 54 on the test. I took at the recruiting office, but he gave me a harder one and failed 100 times harder. What's your opinion? So it sounds like he gave you the East or the 20 minute practice test and then decided to give you the PiCat, which is a full version of the ASAP that you could do at home or at the recruiting office. And that one you said was 100 times harder and you failed. If that is the case, then you're definitely going to have to study. Maybe you just did really, really well, like guessing the right answer on the practice test, or maybe you got nervous during the other one that you found 100 times harder. Not really sure. I would definitely have dialogue with your recruiter to find out maybe what your uh, discrepancy is or possible room for improvement and things like that. But I always tell people, check out these two ASVAB related YouTube channels that have phenomenal videos free to you to learn any particular topic on the ASVAB test. And that is Gaminol Tutors and Grammar Hero. By, by far, in my opinion, the best YouTube channels around the ASVAB test. All right. Um, but yeah. John S. Fabian, it really depends on your eye and your eye, your eyes and the condition, honestly. Hashtag Team Sports coming in from Aldo Gomez Jr. Appreciate that. Thank you so much for the support. Matt Too Much says, question, if I needed a security clearance for my MOS and passed, how frequently will I be investigated to maintain uh, a clearance? So usually you have to renew or recertify your clearance every 10 years. <clears throat> Deonta Palmer, you said, I have a question for you, but I have not seen any questions throughout the entire stream. I'm sorry, man. So hopefully... Uh, your question is not being, obviously it is being blocked because it's not here, but you're probably more than likely using a word or a phrase that I have blocked for whatever reason. So I apologize for that, but direct message me on Instagram at team Swartz and I got you. All right. Sanji shed says, how long do you think a moral waiver should take? I'm on month two going to Ford Jackson. Yeah. I don't know how you, I don't know how you have a ship date if you're waiting for a waiver. Yeah. Your, your recruiter is going to have to answer that question because I'm not sure why. Yeah, I, I don't, I'm not familiar with your situation. But um, depending on the level of authority that needs to approve your waiver, it could take several months. John says, I'm going to retake my physical next week, and I would like to know how likely will I get a waiver for my eyes. Again, I already addressed that. Jaden, yes, you are allowed your Bible or anyone with any religion. Um, your religious book is absolutely allowed at basic training. And they will give you a Bible at basic. That one dude. <laughs> I like that one. <clears throat> I find that I push myself harder when I'm in a group setting, but struggle with discipline in my workouts. When I'm done uh, or when I'm alone, rather, as a drill sergeant, how would you recommend building uh, better discipline? It's just mindset. Whether you feel like doing it or not, it's just making that that hard choice to do it anyway. Because that's the whole point. Uh, that's the whole thing about discipline is like F motivation, right? It is what it is. And uh, whether it's rain, sleet, snow, sun or rain or whatever, whether you're feeling motivated or not, discipline means that you're still going to execute because it's not about how you feel. It's about the goals and your lifestyle. And I struggle with discipline myself. Like, I'm a fat mother flower right now compared to what I was uh, a couple years ago. So it really does. Oh, South Jersey Arden is still here. <laughs> Hell yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Wish I could pay you, but I can't. Um, but yeah, let's see. You just, like, like I said, you just have to commit to yourself. And, and basically, what it boils down to is your purpose. Or being disciplined has to outweigh your biggest excuse. And you just have to execute. That's it. Don't even think twice about it. Just do it. 
Be like Nike. Just do it. Uh, let's see. That one dude. Listen to Jocko Willing. Yes, exactly. Ex Navy SEAL. You just gotta go through the motions. Yep, that's exactly. That's yeah. I was just thinking about him when I was saying that too. Yeah, he's really big on discipline, for sure. David Coho says, "How long does a recruiter and soldier typically stay in contact? Uh, a contract after basic training or was it? your contract is determined at time of you contracting. So I'm not really sure what that question is about, but yeah. So I know that if you're signing specifically a two year contract, it's two years after you get to your first unit of assignment, once you complete all of your initial entry training, right? Other than that, three years is the minimum from the day you sign up for guard and reserve or uh, the day you ship out for basic training. It's three years from there. Chillax, would I be able to get married after I swear in or should I get married before I swear in to get the benefits? As long as you're married before you ship out the training, then you'll get the benefits. It doesn't have to be before. I would wait until after you sign your contract because if it's dependent on you signing your contract, then you're doing it for the wrong reasons. But um, I'll put it to you this way. because This is a hard lesson I had to learn. All right? I'm speaking from experience here. $50 to get married. And thousands, and I mean thousands upon thousands of dollars to go through a divorce and all the other headaches that go along with it. So unless you were already intending to get married and you know that this is the love of your life and, and you're okay with sleeping with them for the rest of your life and arguing with them over stupid frivolous stuff all the dang time, then get married. If not, do not get married and don't take that decision lightly. Because it's costly. It's cheaper to keep her. Just saying. Word to the wise. But with that being said. Jaden said. Is it possible for me to go to church on Sunday. Or something during basic. Or am I stuck with reading the Bible at nights. Watch my basic training mini series. Go through the overview. Actually I'll just post the overview video. Go check that out. But yeah you can go to church on Sunday. I highly recommend. Even if you're not religious to go to church. Appreciate your solid soup, as always. Jose Ivan Escalante says, sorry for all the questions, but can you help me and listen to the National Guard? I am located in New York. Absolutely. Shoot me a DM. Direct message me at Team Swartz. I'll put the uh, link right here. I'd be more than happy to help you out. So I don't know. It's like 9.31. It's like 45 minutes late. But anyway, moving right along. Jaden says, rest and recovery. I suppose we all would need... That if we were smoked every day and learning in the classroom absolutely i leave for basic in october to Fort jackson any tips yes watch my basic training mini series all right if you don't want to watch all those videos uh just keep in mind i want you to watch at least the overview and i'm going to post these two just because they're awesome and i think they're very very helpful and will help you survive basic training mentally and physically way better but um what to pack for basic training video and how to prepare for army basic training are the two critical videos you should watch after you sign your contract. Everything else in the basic training mini series, <clears throat> you can watch anytime you want. Okay. But I would definitely watch the uh, reception video, red phase video, and the overview. Those three videos at minimum in that basic training mini series, just disregard the COVID references because COVID is no longer a thing. All right. Daniel uh, Barboza, I'm coming back to you. Got another super chat coming in from, where is it? It's supposed to be, yeah, right one. Okay. We got Yan Shaulis. I probably jacked up your name, so I, uh, I apologize if I jacked up your name. Question for three hours for my security clearance since I live abroad for most of my life. Is it normal even though I am a citizen? 11X option 40. So, I feel like it depends on the country that you came from and if it's like a threat to you in the US, so let's say you're Russian or from uh, Ukraine or from China, then I would probably, it's safe to assume that you're going to uh, get a lot more questions about stuff that transpired or who you know over there and what business and things that you've done over there, what I, like if you traveled there frequently. Uh, oh, Israel. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I lived in Israel, but I'm also half Russian. Well, there you go. <laughs> Those are like, you know, China and Russia are like, you know, the two people were, I mean, I don't think we're concerned about Russia anymore. 
Ukraine kind of like exposed them there. But uh, we definitely have some concerns uh, in those locations. So, yeah, you're going to have a more in-depth investigation. But in my opinion, as long as you didn't do anything crazy, you're good. I wouldn't even worry about it. It's just going to be longer and more intense than the average background check. But, yeah, I think uh, you're going to be fine. But, yeah. Shoot, where was I? Oh, yeah. Daniel Barboza. Oh, and... uh, Oh, hang on. I got another super chat. But, um, Yen, I appreciate you supporting the channel. Thank you so much. We got Deonta Palmer with another super chat. Appreciate you. Thank you for supporting the channel. It does go a long way, and it goes back and gets invested into the channel <laughs> can you drill in the reserve before going to basic so they will oftentimes put you in paid status while you're in the reserve but most units don't typically want you to drill with them because they can't do anything with you because you're a liability you have not completed basic training so literally you're just be sitting there collecting a paycheck but you'll at least be in paid status to have like military status to be able to get an id card or cac common access card army id whatever you want to call it but um yeah so there's that so it's really up to the unit that they assign you to and whether or not they want to babysit you basically because there's really nothing that you could do just being there I'm just trying to figure out where I was. I think it was right around here. Jaden Hamilton says rest and recovery is what I would need. Oh, yeah, we already talked about that. Yep, talked about that. Okay, here we go. Jaden says, is my social security card needed for everything in the military? Yes, it is. It is. So memorize that for everything. Yes, it is. Hope they approve it. Me too. Uh, Great White says, everything you need will be in your... There we go. What is the point of the ASVAB to be uh, military police? The point of the ASVAB is to uh, find out what job skills and opportunities that could be afforded to you based on your aptitude and other filters like being a citizen, if you've ever been arrested, financial history, so on and so forth. And uh, as far as like, are you asking what the line score requirement for uh 31 bravo you can google that and just choose the, the goarmy.com website or the nationalguard.com website and it will tell you what the line score is required for that uh that uh, mos called 31 bravo military police <clears throat> is it possible for an enlisted to become an officer if he gets applicable college credits later in his or her career yes and one option is called ocs and while you're in college, is if you're going to be attending a two-year program, like your junior, senior year of your four-year degree, or a master's program or equivalent, as long as it's a two-year degree and it starts in the fall, you can explore ROTC. I don't have a video on that yet. And uh, then there's a green to gold or something like that. But those are far, farther and fewer apart, for sure. Jaden says, when I went to MAPS, I didn't have anything other than my ID and social security card. Will I need paperwork when I go to processing at basic? What is the paperwork in the yellow folder? So uh, when you go to sign your contract, you bring all your original documents because the guidance counselor needs to verify. Like we trust you, but we still need to verify. So we're going to triple check and make sure that we look at your original documents to make sure that they are, are authentic and real and that we aren't Photoshopping anything. Uh, secondly, uh, when you go to basic training, when you leave to go to training, you're going to receive a shipper's packet and everything that you need or, or is required to go to the training site will be in that folder and you will bring that with you to the training site. So you don't have to worry about that. So Michael Lopez, I was 
that the video where I say don't study until after you uh, met with your recruiter, that's through the lens of a recruiter, like understanding the mindset of a recruiter and the, uh, the likelihood of you, <clears throat> I guess, realistically knowing like, if, if you're going to be a viable applicant or not. So think about it. If you don't study at all and you walk in, you're like, oh, I got to take a practice test and you fail it by 10 points. All right, cool. You, you weren't studying. So I know that if you put in, put forth like real effort to study, then I know that you're going to score at least 10 points or higher on the actual test because you're going to study. But if you walk into my office and you spent months studying for this practice test and you go in there and you bomb the practice test and you've already studied for months, the likelihood that you're going to increase the scores higher than that is not likely there's a lot of resistance for an applicant to go from uh to the street to signing a contract there's so many variables in the way and so many hurdles that an applicant has to overcome just to get to that point where they can sign a contract so any more resistance that they have the the less of an interest they're going to have to once they get closer to to the contract so again if you study before going there and, and, it, and it will also deter you from wanting to continue the process. Think about it. If you already spent some time studying before you get there, like legitimately took some time to study to get there to take the practice test and you bomb the practice test, a lot of like, people just lose the motivation and they just don't do it. And then in my eyes as a recruiter, I'm, I'm, I'm going to process you no matter what. As long as you're coming to me and you're doing everything you need to be doing and all that stuff, I'm going to process you. But from that's just through the lens of a recruiter. But the likelihood the probability of you getting past that point is low if you've already spent some heavy time studying and then bombing the practice test like unless you get a tutor there ain't no in in most cases 98 percent of the time there's no way you're gonna pass the test after that uh let's see randon padua says if i was taking I think he meant talking to a Navy recruiter and went to MEPS and switched to talking to an Army recruiter. Do I have to get a physical done again? No. So the ASVAB and the medical exam is good for all branches of the military. That part, you don't have to redo. You just might have to redo the application, like where you've lived, work, school, all that stuff. Again, with your new recruiter, unless your last previous recruiter is nice enough to give you back your, your application so that you can just give it to the new recruiter. Like I would do that for you, but most recruiters wouldn't. Angel Rodriguez, if you Google uh, MOS 31B or 31 Bravo, click the website for GoArmy.com or NationalGuard.com, and it will tell you the line score for that MOS. Like, what, what is the score required and which one? Paga Graffiti says, I was going to join the Army back, or but I had a question. What if you drop the soap in the shower, or is it that prison thing? Thanks. No, that's not a thing. Oh, man, please. Uh, it, no, I'm not even going to touch that with a 10-foot pole. Uh, Tokyo Ballin. I sent documents for a surgery I had to MEPS with the Air Force. I am now processing with the Army. Will I have I have to provide these documents again, even though I've been sent to MEPS before? Yes. The, the new branch of service still needs a copy of all your records. It's crispy. Going to basic in October for Fort Jackson. Any tips on what to need to bring uh, with the prep for? Absolutely. I got a, I got a couple videos for you. Here's what the pack. And they're also linked in the description. And this is how to prepare for Army basic training. The Hater World number one fangirl says... I just graduated from just graduated from high school and I'm thinking of joining the army, but I feel like I'm not physically fit to go right now. Any advice? Yes. I just posted in, in the description now, or, or I'm sorry, it's in the description, but I also posted just now in the, the, uh, chat box, right? Follow those tips to get physically ready, but trust me, basic training is designed for you to pass and you have 10 weeks to get to where you need to be to pass the minimum standards. And in my opinion, the minimum standards are completely doable. Maxing it out, no. But passing it, absolutely. I think you'll be just fine. I think you might be overthinking it. Just as, just me and my experience, but I think you're overthinking it and you'll be just fine. The Hater World number one fangirl. All right? 2058, got to come back to that. 
Uh, I got a super chat coming in from Deonta Palmer. Can you go active if you join the Army Reserve? Yes. Um, it, it's called the video I did was guard or reserve to active duty. It's called a condition release. You use the form DD form 368 condition release based on that condition, meaning that if your chain of command approves it, that is your free ticket to leave. You still have to conduct your drill weekends to remain in good standing because you still belong to the National Guard. Because that doesn't mean that you're out of the Guard. It just means that you have the ability to leave if the other or the new branch of service accepts you and allows you to sign a new contract and follows those tips and insights and all that good stuff in that video. So, uh, I mean, you could give us your COVID uh, vaccine card as proof or documentation just to have it in your macro records, but it's not required to join anymore. So if you have it, great. If you don't, don't worry about it. We don't even ask for it anymore, even if you do have it, but don't lose it because you never know, you know? Uh, not really sure, man. Never even heard of diverticulosis at all. So, uh. Probably going to need a waiver. I never heard of it, so I don't know what the likelihood of that being approved or whatever, but yeah. Demolish says, I joined two and a half years thanks to you and your videos, unfortunately, getting MEB out, med board out, basically, uh, but enjoyed my time. Thanks for all your hard work and advice. Thanks again. Hashtag Teen Source. Demolish, I appreciate you. Thank you for sticking around my channel. It's awesome. Uh, it's hell of a support right there. And, uh, that means a lot to me. And I'm sorry to hear that you were getting medic. You are getting medically boarded out of the army. And, uh, if there's anything I can do to help you out, good luck, best wishes. Thank you for your service and, uh, still see you at the top. Good luck in the next chapter of your life. Make the best and, uh, write the next best chapter of your life. Eli Wybera says, uh, can I live off base as an E1 with a roommate in a, an apartment? No hard pass it's not until like you're at least at e5 before you can move off post anthony says joining the army was the worst choice i ever made salute sorry to hear that sorry to hear that Jaden says should i buy a kindle instead of carrying physical books with me in the field no because you're not gonna you're not gonna be able to charge it and you're gonna run the risk of damaging it and i don't know if you know this but like electronic devices they're not cheap i mean it's just yeah, i wouldn't do that i mean you you do you boo boo you do uh what you think your rank can handle all right so with that being said i am all caught up for the day um, if I did not get to your question or if you have something that you want to discuss with me, um, or off the record or whatever, reach out to me on Instagram at team Swartz. I got you say less, be good. Stay blessed. I'll see you next week. Same time, seven to 9 PM. Appreciate you signing out. Take care. Go guard, baby. <laughs> Whoa, 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 hold up. Wait a minute. <laughs> Before you go, I have a members only sat in my YouTube channel, link below in a pinned comment beneath this screen video. This is where I post my behind the scenes videos, community posts, and conduct private live streams throughout the mods where it's more about a one on one kind of field QA session with more to come in the near future. These will not be public and just for you and me because I am all yours. Or you could just join to support me in my efforts to conduct these live streams and videos to help you and thousands of others. I appreciate you. I thank you so much for tuning in. And if I didn't get to your comment tonight, do me a favor, direct message me your comment or concern to uh, at Team Swartz on Instagram or shoot me an email to teamswartzmedia at gmail.com with my Instagram being the preferred and more effective method. So stay blessed. See you in the next one. Team Swartz. Like Team Man with no family, with them boom. Part in me, I get hectic boom. I survive through the wreckage. She go look for the exit. New sheriff in town, I get a little reckless.